Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 13th, 2022 school board meeting. Um, we would like to begin by having the roll call, please, Superintendent McLaughlin. Okay. Uh, Liz Barrett. Pip Clues. Here. Lisa Rappel. Here. Ann Walker. Here. Margot Peabody. Nancy Clayberg. Here. Hope Van Epps. Here. Brian French. Here. Carrie Nolte. Here. Our new teacher rep, Danielle Miles. Here. And our student rep, Nick Dalen. Here. And do we have an SAU 50 rep no. tonight? We do not. Okay. Okay. Could I ask everyone to stand and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Announcements and recognitions. I think the first announcement we'd like to make is that we have a new teacher rep to our board. Her name is Danielle Miles. She's from the Robert J. Lister Academy. She is a, what, what kind of a teacher? Uh, 9 through 12 English and Special Ed. English. English and Special Ed teacher. So she's our new representative and um, she's very committed to the goals and the mission of the Portsmouth Schools. So we welcome you to our board. Thank, Thank you, you for, for agreeing me. to serve and uh, we're happy to have you here. Thank you. So, um, so that's for Danielle. Um, I came across something um, where I learned that our high school now has a bass fish club. So we have a club that is involved in competitions of bass fishing. I thought that I was I just saw real, that too, Nancy, that? and I was like, what? That was, that's really cool, yeah. you know? The sky's the limit at Portsmouth High School, I think. Right. Right. Um, if students have an idea for a club or an organization and, you know, meets with administration and it happens, so. Look out, well, I'll look out for the Bass River, I mean, bass fishing um, <laughs> competitions. They've I already actually, had one competition, so. I was going to say, I believe it's a team and they compete and there's placing and yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah so that's kind of cool. Okay, does anybody else have <clears throat> any other announcements? i uh, got a couple quick ones. Uh, one that I think is a delayed, and both of these will be things that I think I'll end up echoing to the general public uh, later in the week. Um, but um, we have two, two different folks who have uh, some recent awards. And one, I was under the impression that people understood that um, Helene uh, Wimple at the uh, high school, she received a Fulbright grant in the spring. And, and for those who are not familiar with it, I mean, very prestigious competitive award. Um, she's going to have the opportunity to conduct a, a project overseas uh, that involves our students in, in cultural exchange. So um, I, so if people have not heard that, it's good to hear that again, that um, we have a very accomplished um, award-winning uh, Fulbright scholar uh, at, the, uh, at the high school. And then the other came yesterday, uh, uh, Tom, um, Kozakowski? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I, I don't tall, I never use Kaz's full name. No, nobody does. Because, yeah. you know, because Kaz is like a movie character in a lot of ways. Um, so, uh, but I, if you had the opportunity to see uh, Parent Square uh, yesterday, uh, and then we pushed it out to uh, our other social media platforms, uh, I was up at uh, the um, NHIAA uh, annual meeting, and um, and cause didn't know that it was coming, and I didn't know that it was coming. Uh, but right at the, right at the end of the meeting, the last thing was that they were naming the uh, athletic directors of the year across the state of New Hampshire, uh, and the last person to be called was the Division One uh, person, which was Tom. Uh, and so I just want to congratulate Cause um, for all the work that he's he's been doing, uh, and, congr and uh, congratulate the board and making a, a really smart pick to continue. Uh, his employment in that role, uh, and um, and just appreciate what an important part of the fabric of the kind of culture uh, of the district that he is. And um, so, congratulations, Cos. Very good. Congratulations to him. Well deserved. Yes. Does anyone else have a an announcement they would like to make? Okay, we'll move on. Acceptance of minutes. We have. I, I, let's try to do them in a block. Um, 
August 4th, our board retreat. August 9th, our regular meeting. And August 22nd, our board retreat. Move to approve. Second. Are there any um, comments, any changes? Yes, Pip. Um, I noticed in the, um, in the minutes from the second board retreat, I think it's the 22nd, um, that the two goals that we identified weren't um, enumerated clearly. And mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to, if that's going to come back to us in some form that's going to be documented, but I just wanted to make sure that we noted that we had agreed to the second goal because I think it only um, notes the first one, which was the uh, strategic plan. Right. Uh, do you want to comment on that or? <clears throat> I mean, we could amend the. I, I mean, maybe it makes sense to amend the min, minutes to include something that would, because um, it was an important part of our conversation, obviously. Yeah. So I think um, that would make sense. Maybe a move to, for an amendment. Someone has some language that might be great. Do you want? I don't have the language. Because <laughs> 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 like, well, that's I'm why I punted to you. I didn't have <laughs> the language you. either. So I think Margot noted the language. So can we just amend? Um, right. I don't know that it got in the minutes obviously but I, I know that she took note of the two goals so she has that language specific okay. from the retreat but if we just want to amend it to be the goal around communications is that what you were talking about yeah. yes and also I kind of the really minutes suggest that the timeline was to be determined for the strategic plan but I think we kind of agreed to we did. a general timeline so I, I think that should be included too so I, I I think if we could somehow just include Margo's notes yes again she had as that notated that those dates right. on that flip chart um so right I, I know she has dates that we agreed we, upon okay. as well maybe we um hold those minutes and approve the other two yeah. Yeah. and we can move this to the next meeting yeah, yeah. okay okay do we have a motion to approve those first two I think we had one correct yep and then a second oh it was in yeah okay um and then we will move this to the next meeting all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed okay motion passes so we'll make sure to get those notes from um Maga. okay next on the agenda is uh i believe it, oh public comment do we have anyone that would like to participate in our public comment session no one in the audience anyone on zoom that would like to participate in our public comment session do you see anybody down there okay thank you okay we will move on to special presentations which is zach and he's going to introduce our new teaching staff and here's a, here's how i'm going to do that patty introduce the new teaching staff thank you uh, i had the i had the wonderful opportunity to to uh, introduce them on uh, opening day for uh, staff, so I will let Patty take this. Run. So just before we start, um, does the board want to step in front of the uh, stage and just uh, shake hands as the people come through? Would you like to do that? So I would invite you to just step okay down. Yep, everyone. yep. <laughs> I think so, yeah, just sure. you step down in front. And what I'll do is um, I'll call folks that I've got on the list. And some of the folks that I've got on the yes list, I don't quite see them in the audience. So um, I will introduce them anyway. And you can go through and um, be welcomed by our school board members. So first, I, I we have the logistics figured out. Like, what direction are people? Well, we'll 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 have our first candidate or our first um, our first teacher decide that, and then Amanda Buckley, our school psychologist, who's be based at the middle school, come on down, and then everybody can just follow Amanda's lead. How's that? Amanda um, comes to us after finishing practicum, practicum and intern work in Old Orchard Beach and Southern Maine Administrative Collaborative. Carolyn Durfee, speech language therapist, um, most recently at Interlakes. Laura Thomas, our speech language pathologist, most recently at Newfields. Jennifer Berg, special education case manager at Dondero. Jillian Foote, teaching second grade at Dondero. Wendy Fox, a reading specialist at Dondero. Susan Moore, occupational therapist at Dondero. 
Jennifer Shump, second grade teacher at Dondero. And Heather Small, BCBA at Dondero. Jen Branch is a fourth grade teacher at Little Harbor. Aaron Miller, New Franklin first grade teacher. Marissa Bonanno, Italian teacher. Monique Berkey, Family and Consumer Science at the Middle School. Allie Frawley, Special Ed Case Manager at the Middle School. Ann Hakey, Health and Phys Ed Teacher at the Middle School. Lisa Jacobus, Social Worker at the Middle School. Brennan Lynch, Math Teacher at the Middle School. Amanda Goudreau, High School Science Teacher. Andrew Hemker, High School Social Studies Teacher. Liz Hoyt, High School Science Teacher. Heather Wheeler, High School Science Teacher. Katie Juster, Drama Teacher at the Middle and High School. And Brendan Sullivan, an ESOL Teacher at the High School. I think that's everybody. I will do that. We had a very large contingency of new teachers and uh, professionals joining us this year, and it's great to see so many of their faces here. So thank you all for coming, um, and I would invite the board to come back up. And to our new staff, thank you for coming tonight. On your way out, uh, please grab another cookie from our great CTE uh, de department program, um, and uh, we will continue with our meeting. Thank you so much. Just want to say one other thing as you're walking out the door. Our board chair, after she was walking around with all of you, came up and said, these are really nice people. <laughs> so, have a great night. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> When we get down to the end of okay. Yeah. okay, 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 that was very nice. We welcome all of our new teachers and um, ESOL and BCBA and all of those good people. Um, hopefully, they'll have a great year. Um, we're moving on to the superintendent's report, so I turn it over to Zach. Great couple of uh, couple of things. Some of the some of the normal stuff you're used to. Um, the materials from the board and administrator uh, monthly newsletter, uh, also materials from the uh, New Hampshire School Boards Association. But I did want to mention uh, one that we're, there's not a memo in here for it, but I, I know we've been having an ongoing discussion because we're coming up on the first school-based meeting, and I think there's um, I think there's good reasons to have the board have meetings where you're actually out in the schools and not exclusively here at City Hall. Uh, there's a lot to be a lot to be learned. It's good to just be in those spaces. I know we've also been having a conversation, uh, Patty and I and some folks at Central Office, about a desire to make sure that we have the right technology in place so that those meetings are professional, uh, both, for the, both for people who are on site, uh, but also for people at home. Uh, and I think we've been a little bit worried about what we have set up currently and whether or not we might need to up, up our game a little bit. Uh, in in terms of um, making those meetings what we want them to be. Uh, and I know the other day we had a conversation about uh, the, we are talking about the Zoom link and the importance of the Zoom link. Now, first of all, I, uh, now that we're on that, I just wanted to say I was like, geez, I'm not sure how that happened. And after the fact, I had some dialogue with folks, and I had mentioned to folks the possibility of removing the Zoom link. So I want to make sure that looked like it could have been somebody else and it wasn't. Um, but it, but uh, so my apologies for that. Um, but anyways, I, it's clear that I think that the board, and I'd love to have some more dialogue about it, has an interest in maintaining the, vir the virtual meetings in a way that would allow people to continue to watch us live and continue to have the option if they wanted to from home 
uh, to be able to participate. If that's the case, I worry about our ability to do that well based on what we were do it sounds like was happening in the past. Um, and that's where I get to kind of like what we would need to up our game a little bit. And that might mean a little bit of equipment. Um, that may, might mean a little bit of staffing. So I wanted to kind of gauge the board on where people are at because we are approaching that first opportunity to uh, be heading out to schools. Um, so, yeah, Liz. Um, I guess my question would be, as a new school board member, I haven't had the experience of being in a school, but I guess I was curious, what is the actual benefit given that um, my understanding would be that the school board members would go into a meeting um, and the meeting would start at the time the meeting is supposed to start. So I guess I'm wondering as a new school board member, what were the past benefits of meeting in a school? Was there some sort of tour or some sort of, you know, you walk in the door so you get the presence of the school? I just, I, I guess I, I would want to understand what the benefit was previously um, versus you know, maybe there's another option. Maybe we continue to meet in a space like this that can be recorded and have other opportunities and committees or whatnot to actually see the school or tour the school or experience the school versus walking in the door and sitting down for a meeting. So having attend those meetings, I personally would say there wasn't a benefit. Um, there was actually a counter problems um, of not having good technology, not having good sound, um, and to no fault to the technicians that work, they can only do as as you know good as the equipment that we have within the district, which is limited right now. So I, I do think we need some technology upgrades um, from the board perspective, even in our own conference rooms. But uh, to your point, Liz, really once you're on screen, you, you can't really tell that you're in the school um, versus just saying that we're in the school. So I, I'm not sure that, I'm sure there was good intention for why they started it, but it's, <clears throat> it's really no different than just a meeting. And a board member can visit any school at any time. Right. Um, you just have to make sure that the principal is aware and it's always probably good to go through Zach first. But you know, we invite board members to visit schools as they would like. Um, I know I've done it in the past. Um, so, and of course, you have a child in the school, so you're familiar with the, the school that your child is in. But um, you know, people are encouraged to do that. I liked it because we would go to the different locations, and oftentimes parents would come from that school, or teachers would come from that school. So you would get an audience. It wasn't a big audience, but you'd get a few people that would come. Um, but the communication was never, ever um, ideal. So if we do resume it, um, we have to make sure, and as you said, that that happens. Um, does anybody else have a comment about it? Lisa and Ann. Um, so I kind of agree with what's already been said, so I won't repeat that. I will say as a parent that I felt like when I did know about it, it sent a message that the people who were sitting up here cared about hearing directly from people who were actually in the buildings in a good way. I do wonder if that's the purpose, though, if there would be another way to consider doing that. You know, even if it was just like a school board Q&A, like, mm -hmm. that's not for us to talk about all of this policy stuff, but just to be like, lay it on us, like, what do you want to know or what do you want to talk about in a public forum might be more effective at mm -hmm. outreach in the community than just taking this business and plunking it down in right, a different platform. Because right. the idea. Zoom was terrible, the audio was bad, like you'd yeah. watch people's backs during the presentations right. if you could hear, you know, <laughs> it just didn't work. Okay, we can discuss okay. that. Ann, uh, and then who had the hand up? Uh, Kerry and in Hope. The, in the earlier days, usually we were at the school a little bit on the earlier side so that there were a lot of parents there and, and many of the teachers in that building would be there and so you had a chance to mingle around and that kind of thing. You didn't really do a tour or anything of that sort, but if you wanted to, you could have. Uh, but, but as time went on, you know, that, that didn't happen quite so much. So mm -hmm. I would kind of feel that uh, the, the sounding sound was tough, especially Lister 
was really hard to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, you were in the gym, and, and then it oh. and later when you were in a classroom, you could hear a little bit, but it, it was very crowded and not, not really room for people. So I don't know that there would really be a big advantage. Certainly it was pre-Zoom. Pre <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Kerry. Um, I w had a very similar thought to what Lisa had um, in, you know, having heard that some of it was just presence at the school and connection. Um, although I've only been on the board for nine months or so, I don't, I haven't felt that was accomplished in that. So I think it would be great to do like meet and greets at schools, you know, twice a year of fall and the spring or something like that. And I'm happy if the board wants to pursue that to coordinate that or try to and who can make it can make it. But I think even tonight, just being able to touch base with teachers for a couple minutes was so lovely. And mm -hmm. we just don't have those opportunities too. Um, and I think it could be really positive for the district. Oh, so I would just say that I feel like Steve did present those opportunities through his town hall meetings. And so he did those um, yep. regularly at PHS, but he did have them at other schools at times too. Um, sometimes they're at the middle school. Uh, I don't know that he had them at the elementary schools, but, um, but it was an opportunity for board members to come. It was an opportunity for um, people to meet board members and um, you know he always acknowledged that there were board members with them in the at, in the evening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there so that people could come up or you could hear from parents directly too so I always appreciated those mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the principals used to have their coffee times as well which parents um, attend those and board members could also go to those to see schools and meet parents I've been to a few of those as well so there there are opportunities to get in the buildings to different buildings and to meet parents and parents to have interface but just throw that out there okay thank you everyone um, sorry just to roll back around I guess it, it seems to me that the original intent of this situation um, similar to what Ann said was more of a meet and mingle um, and it seems like that it's gotten away from that and I appreciate what Steve did but it does seem like my understanding of what Steve was doing was not an in intent to um, have the public meet the school board or express their concerns to the school board it was more mm -hmm. of a meet and mingle with the superintendent when I've been to the to those meetings and so um, I guess I would propose that the school board do something separate and I don't know if there's any way to tie it to the PTA um, given that um, my experience at the elementary school is that during the PTA meeting is when we hear from the principal and whatnot. So um, I don't know if there's any way to link together because I just feel like everybody's sort of everybody's short staff, everybody's busy right now. And how can we sort of limit that load and also limit the load on ourselves a little bit too? But um, but sort of uh, coordinate a little more um, in that intent because I do think it's really important to have our meetings recorded and have them accessible. Thank you. All right, why don't we, um, Zach, Margo, and I can talk about this more at our pre-meeting before our next board meeting, and maybe we can come up with some kind of a plan of action and see how everybody feels about it. No, we do have what? Is our next meeting it's supposed to be New off Franklin? Site, yes. Um, oh. Zach, yeah. for the new technology challenges, yep. is that something that could potentially be addressed, say, first semester, and we could look at visiting? Some of the school second semester are you thinking like by the end of this year we would be able to have upgrades that would go into this I coming do, budget so there's two pieces to that it's it's you know having conversations with nathan having conversations with matt who's uh, you know having some dialogue about like what would we need um how many of the needs do we need to replicate how much of it is going to be site-based how much is going to be traveling the traveling kit um those types of things and what what type of places can we dip in to maybe you know have the money to pull it off? So um, so I don't know the answer to that yet until okay. I can engage those folks with some more dialogue. But I feel like I feel like it's potentially a doable thing that we wouldn't take us super long. Not by September twenty seventh. No, but maybe but, by next you know, semester. Within, we could. I would I would hope by next semester is definitely a very doable thing. Um, uh, and then if we had and then at that point if we had more consistent technology then let's do it but I do I think about it as someone who is trying to watch some of your meetings from the outside and it was challenging it was like what are people saying it's way across the room I can't really hear 
something about outdoor education, but I'm not really sure what that person just said, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and that was from a guy a couple states away, not someone down the street hoping to hear about their schools. Right. So um, I think that was the basis for our concern. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, oh, Carrie, did you I, want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think that as the pandemic has changed, it's a really positive thing that we have more people engaging on the, like watching the meetings or zooming in or things like that and so I think to me the priority is to keep that because I don't yeah. think I've heard anything that it was really successful to be meeting at this at the schools before you know so um, I don't know I just I think that's the priority yeah is keeping the zoom option so do we need to make a motion to change the calendar to not have the next meeting at New Franklin or is that something I just would hate for people to be looking on the website that says that and for all three people who might. We'll have to change the postings for sure. Right, because the, the calendar still says that location. It does. Yeah, I would say, I would say I we should make a, I'll make a motion uh, to change the, the next meeting to be uh, at City Hall pending availability of this room or uh, conference room so that the meeting could be recorded and that the school board would consider uh, other opportunities to okay. meet in the in the elementary schools and the schools. Can, can we broaden that motion beyond next meeting to just so you know meet here until further to notice. meet here <laughs> here until technology concerns can be worked okay. out that and amend the calendar as necessary? Is that okay, Liz? That she amended your motion? <laughs> yes. Okay. So I guess hope Thank is the was. second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so until further notice, we will meet here. Correct. Okay. Just a comment. I, I had looked forward to New Franklin because it was so hot. And I, and I was dying to hear how their AC was working. Right, right, right. <laughs> but it's not hot anymore. We'll take Zach's word for it. Yeah. And everybody else that has New Franklin. Um, Kerry goes to New Franklin so she can tell us about the air conditioning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we will move report back at our next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda is uh, the board and administrative. You already talked about that, correct? The PAMP, the. Um, yep, that's what I was care of. Uh, the yeah. NHSBA legislative review. Do you want to go over that? Or We have that in our packet. <laughs> These are the new resolutions that were passed for this year that school districts are required to um, have become law. And I believe we've done all that, correct? So I think in terms of that particular item, which includes the resolution, when you get to the resolutions or the proposed resolutions from, from um, NHSBA, right. I think my intent, I thought what we were trying to do is when we get down under new business to E, Okay, that's what we'll talk e, about. And E kind of got blended a little bit. So it's really the intent was, I think there was, and we, and we can talk about this more when we get to E, okay. but the intent was to talk about, the, I think, the existing um, uh, discussion and, and proposal around creating a legislative committee for, okay. the, for the board, some of the conversation we've had around that, and then blended in there a little bit is the, the uh, NHSBA wants, would like each board to send a delegate to be part of the process to vote on resolutions. Mm-hmm. But those are, they're both cousins because they're both related to trying to um, have some influence on, on legislative priorities in the state, but they're kind of separate things at the same time. So there's a little bit of a blend in there and it wasn't on purpose, so. Okay, so if it, that's okay with everybody, we'll wait till we get to item 10E to discuss this. So just put that aside for a minute. Okay. So you do have a letter of resignation um, under correspondence. You have a letter of resignation um, from the teacher that you would uh, need to uh, accept. Okay, um, and we have the policy committee mi- minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. my, my apologies. Okay, so everyone has policy committee minutes. Do you want to comment on any of those or does anyone from the policy committee want to comment on any of these, Pip, Liz? Again, these are incorporating some of the new legislation that came down, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess my only correction or concern with the minutes is the representation that I had something about coaches 
having players run and then um, uh, the uh, indicating that if a coach becomes aware of a member of their team participating in off-campus drinking, they should meet with a student and perhaps have them do extra laps of practice, refer to them to school counselor and require a late act. I think my representation was that, you know, I, in speaking out loud, I was sort of like, what are we, what are we doing here? And I think overall, you know, my representation was that um, the, the child should be referred to a school counselor and required to see a LADAC um, if there was off-campus drinking. So I don't know that the meeting minutes reflect exactly um, what I was thinking or said. I mean, I may have sort of said it out loud in, in like, what are we doing? But um, I think it's been very clear in my approach here with the IDG and JJA or whatever the code is now that, um, you know, I'd want a student to uh, see a counselor and uh, and go through more of a therapeutic process. So um, I would just say that that portion, I'd like to strike that portion of the meeting minutes because uh, I don't think it's a clear representation of, of my thoughts and um, what I conveyed at the meeting. Thank you. Okay, well, um, you know what we can do? We can ask Paulette to convey that message to Kathleen and the minutes can be amended. Is that acceptable? Yes, thank you. Okay. And I think I would say that the, the other, um, as you all know, we're st we've, we've taken um, IGD slash JJA back to, um, back to, for one more revision, at least one more revision. Um, mm -hmm. So that's still to be discussed, but I think the other ones were mostly um, changes that were that were recommended um, by the uh, statewide um, that we've just accepted, or they were um, one sentence here or there just to make a simple change. So there's nothing really consequential in any of these policies. And that meeting is September 21st. Is that correct? The next yes, meeting is September 21st. I believe. Okay. Okay, any other comments about the policy committee minutes? Okay, we will move on to um, Nancy. Yes. One thing I just wanted to <clears throat> go back to the, pol the school board policies. Did we want to discuss the high school representation? Oh, okay. That was within that policy. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, yes, um, there. It, it, for those of you that had a chance to read these, there is a um, policy that says that the student, you're talking about the student rep, correct? Yes. The student rep to the school board, <clears throat> each high school in that district needs to be represented. We obviously have a wonderful representative from Portsmouth High School, um, but we also have the Robert J. Lister Academy, which is another high school in our district. And um, so I guess we, um, we should add someone from that school to our board. Now, are, uh, or should we? Although, why don't we discuss it? Okay. Uh, did you have something, Brian? Nope. No. Nick. So, um, I personally am in support of a student representative from Lister Academy because, a, it's not a group I feel I can really represent. I've, I don't think I've ever actually been to the building. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been in the community campus, I guess, but I've I've never been in in the Lister Academy, basically. Um, but also because I feel one of the blind spots as a student representative I had was that there wasn't, uh, obvi obviously I, <laughs> I've had a great environment to kind of learn what learn the ropes here, but I didn't have another student who could explain like this is what you're expected to do. Mm. It, it, it was a perspective that I think I would have benefited from and I think having two student reps allows us to kind of stagger graduations and allow us to have that experience stay with students. Um, I feel that would be necessary. Another item of interest is that it states explicitly in the law that the student representative has to be directly elected by their students, which as it stands, I don't believe is the process in place. Um, I, I was elected to student council, which made me eligible for the position, but I believe I was appointed directly by the principal. So I think that's going to be something that we need to consider for the high school. But. Uh, that's my I always, I, it was I, it was my impression that the the student council appointed the person up, but that's not correct. You feel uh, no. that was no. not my experience of the process. Okay. I think having the student council do it would be a good way of representing the student body because having a full rep referendum would probably require people to give speeches on it or have it be integrated directly into the student council election. 
Um, whereas I think it, it would be a very reasonable thing to do to have student council, senate uh, yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. but and, and our rep before issue, sure. Nick was a student council member, but was not selected by the student council Who? to be on the board. Say Arden. that again. The rep before Nick. Arden. Oh. Okay. And they're well, we can, we they're can appointed you. until they leave too. Until they graduate. Or until yeah, until they decide they don't want to long, right. no longer yeah, be yeah, on yeah, here. Yeah. If he wants to quit <laughs> tomorrow, then I guess they, there'd be somebody else appointed. But okay. that was my understanding too. What do you? Th how do well, you think we should? I was just going to say well, I really appreciate what uh, Nick was saying because I think that one of the things in my previous place we originally had one student rep for a long period of time, uh, and one of the we what we ran into was it takes a student a year. Mm -hmm. to really get a feel for how this all works. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's nothing better than having another student who's a, a veteran hand to be like, well, this is what happens. First part, you know, Nancy has us do the Pledge of Allegiance. Then this happens. You know, this is what you need to do. Um, and what we found is having that staggered graduation, two reps type thing uh, was really successful uh, for us. Because but we always had a, a student who had been around for at least a year and already knew the ropes, that type of deal. Um, what I don't know is, and I don't, I don't understand clearly from the statutory change, is whether or not Lister would be considered an independent high school within, mm. our, within our district or Lister's a, a, a program affiliated with PHS program, yes. or whatever. Program. Yeah, so, so I'm not clear. I, I, I haven't looked at that closely enough. Mm. Um, but uh, so I would need, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure whether it would have to be a, a lesser student or, or not, um, but it's something I think we should explore a little bit. Okay, why don't we do that? Should we go <laughs> to the uh, school board association and see if they have an interpretation of that? Where the legislation was just as a put on separate stuff. question, I just think it would be especially valuable, particularly while we're making all of these big decisions that directly impact Lister to consider that independent of you know because we always have the option of doing that because we think it's a good idea you know there's no law that says we can't correct and it just seems to me like a good idea so I'm just putting that out there as we're thinking about it Liz um, I saw some language change from principal to program uh, I don't know the exact program coordinator program manager for Lister um, I believe that was in one of the contracts we had looked at, um, not to sort of put something on public record that may not be a contract yet, but I, I saw some language change at some point um, from principal to program something. And so my only thing is, um, from a statutory standpoint, it may not be required that we have somebody for Lister. Um, however, I would like to consider what Nick said as far as having a representative for Lister. At the same time, I think it would be good to hear from um, the principal or what, whatever we're calling the principal now about whether it would actually yeah. be appropriate um, or feasible um, for some students who um, are at Lister to, to do that. And maybe if there is a more of a limited capacity that they could partake in, if um, you know their life and um, situation limits their ability to participate in meetings at seven o'clock on a Tuesday. Um, I just, you know, I understand the yeah. fact that, um, you know, Nick is, is, a, is, you know, he's top of the top over here at Portsmouth and he's like, <laughs> he's doing a lot. And, and not to say that the kids at Lister aren't because they're going to school and they're making it every day, but I think that, um, you know, they, there may be some struggles there that all of us maybe not, you know, don't understand. And um, if they're in Lister, then they have faced challenges in their life. And um, coming here on a Tuesday every other week might not be uh, feasible for them. So I would like to understand some capacity of what could be done, but um, I don't want to commit us to requiring somebody to be here um, every other week. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Zach. Um, just really quick, I, I just want to make sure that my so my, my comments are just about making sure we understand what we, to what Lisa said, what we have to do. Mm -hmm. We can always do more. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I just want to make sure that was clear that I'm, I'm not opposed to a list of representative. I just want to make sure we're clear about is it a mandatory thing or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think, you know, in engaging some of the students uh, at Lister, um, 
there's some pretty amazing kids who were a part of that program too. And um, so I wouldn't want to underestimate. I hear what you're saying, yeah, oh, yeah. but I wouldn't want to underestimate um, some of the uh, some of what uh, students who are part of Lister Academy could bring to, to the quality of our conversations. Uh, I know we've had some some of my best student conversations in the district so far. I've been with Lister students. So. Thank you. Oh. I was just going to say, um, let us not discredit the fact that we have a very strong student representative now, and we have a new teacher representative from Lister. So um, I know you represent the teachers, but you work very closely with the students there. So I, I would love to just suggest that maybe Zach and these two lovely people down here can kind of put their heads together once Zach understands what is required. Um, there may be a way that you can get information um, from the students, you know, Nick, if there is to only be one representative here um, by somehow partnering with Danielle. I don't know. I'm just spitballing right now. But I just want to, oh, we have the obvious, we have an obvious connection. Right. Yeah. So that's a good point. Okay. Well, let's, oh, Danielle. Yeah. Um, I was going to bite my tongue this whole meeting and just observe. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're going to find out really quick. Uh, I knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, I think a couple things. I think whether the school is legally a school separate from the high school, I think those are matters of, of technicalities and words. Um, our, our kids absolutely are part of the district. They're absolutely PHS students. Um, but I would be interested in to that idea of whether the title change of a program director indicates that the school is no longer a separate entity um, because that has been sort of an umbrella that has served us and also has harmed us. Um, so I would be curious just to have that discussion. I think that's interesting. Um, I do think that I do not want to discredit our kids. We've been talking a lot this year about empowering them and creating subcommittees that um, includes for planning of our move that includes fundraising because that's a big part of what we do and we've been making those decisions for them our students loudly and clearly have expressed an interest in changing how we um, raise that money although I love getting out and raking leaves <laughs> Not all of our kids see that as the number one way so they've already expressed an interest in being involved um, I think it's definitely worth following through um, our kids right now, especially our student body, are really well represented in community in terms of working, in terms of being on teams. We've got football players, we've got cheerleaders. Uh, I don't see it being difficult to find somebody who would want to stand up and take on this role. Thank you, Danielle. Ian. I just wanted to comment that I'm the person actually who gave it the new name. Uh, it, <laughs> it, it, it has often been referred to as an alternative high school, but at the time, uh, when our uh, superintendent was leaving and, and didn't want a gift, I, I thought maybe naming it for him. And, uh, and I had checked with the city manager and we discussed it. And because it is a program, it was the PASS program prior to that. And so we decided to give it a new name and make it Lister Academy. So basically it is a program and not necessarily a, a school, an alternative school. Okay. Well, that's just background. Thank you. Liz. Um, I just want to say I didn't mean to uh, discredit any of our students. Um, I struggled as a student as well, and I really appreciate hearing from Danielle. I just, my, my reason for saying that was just that I didn't want to have us rush to say we absolutely want somebody on here. I want to have, so I do want somebody from Lister, but I want to make sure that it's accessible um, to the students and also, you know, be thoughtful in our approach too. So thank you. Okay. Well, how about if we leave it that we'll discuss it and uh, get some information from the School Boards Association, um, try to understand exactly what the legislation means and um, what constitutes a high school and what doesn't. So um, why don't we all discuss this further? We'll get back to you. How does that sound? Great. Back. That works for me. Okay. Um, and then and it seems like there's two, there's the, I think, I, I mean, I'm thinking about the homework is there's two separate questions one is the the have to clarifying the have to uh which then would inform um possible want to's i think so unless i'm missing some piece okay 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 thank you nancy 
Yes, I, Carrie. I derailed us or moved us back to the legislative review. Yes. We had, I don't, I just wasn't sure if we finished the policy committee minutes because that's just informational, right? So yes. we're not yes. voting on no. or amending them. No, well, we're going to ask Paulette to listen to the tape tonight and make that change that Liz requested. Okay. Um, so we'll ask her to do that, okay. but no, just we, wanted, don't, we I don't approve. Just wanted to make sure I didn't pull yes. us away from finishing that. No. Thank you. But thank you for asking the question. Okay, let's move on to school opening. Zach, do you oh, want to I talk saw about that, that the letter of resignation. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I thought we did okay. that. Um, which I, I'm under the impression I think you need to formally accept. Oh, oh, okay. Do we have a motion to accept the resignation of <coughs> Bartlett Brown? <coughs> I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So that next one is that just on opening real quick, and I'll yes. give, give it a very, very uh, limited, um, I would say, you know, when we do meetings uh, as an administrative team, one of the things we close with uh, each time is we debrief the meeting. Uh, and there's two things, we have this, uh, this procedure we use called pluses, pluses and deltas. And so what were things uh, during the meeting that worked for you, what are the pluses? And then deltas, what are some things you'd like to see change uh, as a result of uh, your experience? So I'll give you two pluses and two deltas out of the, out of the open um, so far. Uh, during our opening period of time, one of the pluses I think there's been in the places that I have visited over the course of things, there's been a very, and the board has been worried about um, social, the social, emotional, and mental health status of a, a lot of our students and kind of where we're at. My experience both at the school level but also in the classrooms that, that I've been visiting is there's a bit very intentional, which I think is always true of, of teachers and schools, uh, but even more so in this situation, very intentional work around relationship building uh, as students uh, return uh, and, and, um, and then also uh, getting students into routines, which create a certain sense of stability. So I've, I've been happy to see that both at the, at the building level, but then also in the, some of the classrooms I've been visiting it being clear that that's a that's purposeful, and of course that you know that's on a sliding scale. Um, lower grades it tends to be a, a, a bigger emphasis on that uh, than as students progress. But I've even seen it in in the high school. I've seen similar types of stuff where there's this emphasis on on um, building those relationships and creating routines. Um, I also wanted the other plus for me, big plus, is you know principals as the two rookies up here are are learning the ropes and learning the systems. Uh, we, we've had to lean um, heavily on principals, on your existing principal staff, uh, and they've done a spectacular job of making sure that the train continues to run mm -hmm. um, and that things are getting done that need to get done. So just kudos, kudos to principals and teacher leaders who have been making sure that those things are all um, getting accomplished. I would say two deltas that are coming out of uh, you know things that we might want to change. We've had, we, we have had a little bit of struggle on, um, on some, we've had some busing challenges uh, in a couple of different ways. The, uh, some of that is, at the moment, we're, we're running, I think it's a total of nine buses. Uh, we're scheduled to have more. Uh, a driver shortage that is putting a strain on a variety of different things. Uh, that's manifested itself in a couple of ways. I think previously, at some point, we had discussed whether it was at the retreat or was here, uh, that in light of uh, some of those social, emotional, mental health needs, we've been trying to be trying to work with a lot of external partners around providing opportunities after school for students. But there's been um, a lot of those folks have needed transportation to get students to where they're going to go, and the district did not plan around long being the long-term conduit for transportation to say uh, Camp Gundalo. Um, people thought a year ago that that was a that was like a one-off opportunity, uh, and then as the community campus has come online, and now there's programming that's going to be done through the rec at community campus, uh, you know, rightfully so, uh, the city through the rec department has been really excited about the opportunity to have all students have access to community campus without parents driving them there. So we've been working um, closely with rec to also be in that position where that can be the case but um we still have a lot of bugs to work out 
in that. So we're, we're, we're making it happen. At this point, we have students who are able to, to uh, go out to Beverly Hill. We have um, the, the way we get kids out to, out to Gundalo at this point is we have a pair of professional, uh, two pair of professionals who go out to Beverly Hill. Buses arrive, drop off students from the elementary schools at Beverly Hill. We monitor those students. And then the Y does a couple of trips back and forth to get students out to Gundalo. It's a little bit of, we're kind of, that face is the right face. Um, it's a little, we're a little bit of MacGyvering right now in terms of making that work. Um, Building the sidewalks? We're, well, we're, and it's, so we're kind of, we're, we're, it's taking a while to get students out there, but it's, but it's, you know, the alternative was parents, you got to figure out a way to get them out there. So we're trying to kind of make it work and we're trying to do that in an environment we're already behind on the number of buses that we'd have to do in normal runs. So I, I really want to thank, um, you know, the folks at STA, our, our bus company, for all the work they've been doing to try to make it happen. But in the midst of all this, we're also then, we have students showing up, we have late arriving buses in some cases to the middle school. We've got um, the afternoon runs are, are behind our stated times. So we've, we've had to rely on the patience of parents in a lot of cases uh, because we're not hitting our times right now. So that is a delta we are working on um, while trying to maintain all those after school uh, possibilities. I think the other delta that I've heard from a, from a chunk of teachers and some of the principals about it were all, was, the f was the front loading of the, the, we have a certain number of, of, of teacher workshop professional development days, and this particular cal calendar had a lot of those front loaded in a chunk. Um, and I think there's some conversation to be had about the desire to replicate that again next year or to distribute those days more across, across the year. Um, I think we're still kind of working through what, you know, what we think is in the, in the best interest of folks. But I, that has been a delta that's been expressed to me. We had a little too much time on the front end, um, and uh, it probably would have been better to distribute some of those days over across the calendar. So two pluses and two deltas. Um, but overall, I would say, um, you know, it's been a pretty successful start uh, with, a, with a couple of rookies at the helm. Mm -hmm. Um, not due to our work, but due to the, the professionalism of the folks that, that you already have working for you. Mm -hmm. So, Hope, Brian, Kerry, Liz. So I had a couple of things at the yes. high school to yep. bring up. And um, honestly, I'll present the first one, but it, it's probably, I was hoping Nathan was going to be here. So. Sure. <laughs> so it's fine if you want to take it to him and and bring it back. It's regarding um, parking at the high school. Yep. So parking has been an ongoing, um, I will say improvement. We've gotten it online at the high school and payment is still not online, which is a little crazy in this time and age, but, but we're, I know they're working towards things. Um, but I know that the high school has also lost some parking from the churches this mm -hmm. year. And so um, I just was curious about parking spaces. Uh, Nathan, at one point, I believe, had mentioned that it was in the budget to repave the parking lots. And I was just wondering, since we did lose those <laughs> church spaces, if there's any place to expand parking spaces. I know students are parking a lot behind the Tuscan, old Tuscan market, and that has become an issue. I myself was confronted and and um, encouraged one parent to either call in tonight or to mm -hmm. go and speak to the principal before they escalated it to the police as they were planning to do. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to bring that up. I, did, I didn't know if there, I know there's not a lot of room for expansion, but maybe I don't know if even around the baseball or if Nathan seems to always be three steps ahead. Sure. Um, and then I also just wanted to bring up the parking cost. There's a lot of confusion. It comes up every year and it's all over social media of yep. what of what that cost really covers. And there seems to be a lot of confusion that, you know, why, why would it cover snow plowing if we work with the city? Isn't that the city's job or don't right. we have? Right. So I was hoping that that could somehow be communicated out to parents of where their money yep. went um, and what it goes towards um, so that that confusion could be yeah. alleviated and maybe even in improving the process at the front of the year when parents and students are presented with the price it could just be included of what that price covers. Sure, and I, I know we received, and this is one of those where 
this feels like ancient history to me because we received an email from uh, a community member who I don't even think it was a parent who was concerned about the about the cost and about where was this money going and why would it why would it cost as much as it is and at that time I had followed up with Nathan and Kenny um, Lynchy about the about the cost and my understanding and I'm I got to go back and I'll, I'm I'm happy to include a memo in a future board agenda just to kind of clarify those things. Uh, but my, I, what I do recall is there were some beliefs within the email that were, actually, were incorrect mm -hmm. about who does the plowing um, um, and then where, where does the money go? And I had had these conversations, but it escapes me at this point. I, I was satisfied that, that we were doing what we needed to be doing, but I'm happy to include a future memo that just basically says where where do the where do those funds go uh and who is responsible for what aspects of um plowing if i remember correctly i think one of the concerns was well doesn't dpw handle the plowing on our sites and no they don't right we, we do our own that? we do our own plowing um and i understand you know it's always a challenge when we're a school district school system inside of a municipality to try to figure out where those lines are. And mm -hmm. I think people had concerns like, well, is, are we paying for this twice, once through the budget right. for the and what's the city taxes that's come once. up exactly. yes, this week. So as I'm well. happy to include a um, to include a memo in our next board packet that would detail those things um, so that people are this clarity. Okay, that would be good. And, and in terms of your expansion helpful. stuff, um, my understanding is at the moment, and I'm happy, and happy to have Kenny and or um, Nathan speak to it, is that we, we have definitely maxed out what we have at the moment without so in, investing some significant funds. So uh, we're just so. looking at a repave, not a, a, an additional. Okay. Yep. And then my other thing was around um, the flex block. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, if memory serves me, that's been about a five or six year as, as my kid, it started when yep. my kid was in ninth grade, so telling my age. Yep. Um, but it's changed and been assessed every year. I think parents and students thought last year, oh, it, they finally got it right. It mm -hmm. seemed like even good feedback from teachers that it's at the end of the, the day and that students can flex in and then they can change if they need to based on what their schedules are for the week. So it's kind of like going into a, a game and and knowing who your opponent's gonna be, right? They know what their tests are gonna be as the week goes on and they can get the help they need. But it's my understanding that that has changed again this year. And I'm a, I'm a little confused as to what has caused the change. So again, if changes could be communicated out to parents, because yeah. parents are working with their students and holding them accountable mm -hmm. towards, well, you have flex block for that. And now mm -hmm. it seems like my understanding of the change is that they've gone back to flexing in on Mondays, and um, it seems like this has happened the year before last, before they changed it last mm -hmm. year. Um, they flexed in on Mondays, and then they couldn't make any changes. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we were told then was because some students weren't flexing in. So mm -hmm. again, it seems like the ones that are being responsible, the majority, are being punished for the ones that are not doing what they're supposed to do. So I'm just wondering, I know that they haven't, uh, you know, a flex person on Monday, I think, I don't know if they use the language of advisory or what they call them now, but um, it seems like maybe if for students that are are being lost in the shuffle of not taking the responsibility to flex themselves in, that perhaps, um, you know, they could be flexed into custodian volunteer time since we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're short staffed there. No, I mean, in all seriousness, yeah. that there could be another way because it, it was something that was very beneficial for students to be able to um, mm -hmm. flex in, but then get their work as the week went on and make mm -hmm. the adjustments they needed based on the workload and the test loads that they were, were given. So I just was curious about that and I would ask that whatever the situation is that again it be communicated out to parents okay I, what I can speak to and then Nick can probably give me more details I can just say that on the administrative teacher side there's been there's ongoing intense dialogue about the future of flex what was the original intention of flex the logistics of trying to make it work um, and as of me meeting it was Monday or Friday um, some of that was still ongoing uh, in terms of what is going to be, what will it look like for this upcoming year? But Nick, you might have 
better insight into the most recent internal communication about some of that stuff. So, yeah, I, I have actually had some discussions because there's been controversy complaints, um, a few things about it. Um, so I just, I actually just did a test on the Flex software. Um, it seems like, and I've previously run into this as well, it seems like you can change your um, Flex appointment during the week. I'm not exactly sure if that extends to the day of, and um, from what I've heard, there's also been instruction that we're supposed to flex into all of our appointments at the beginning of the week. Monday, yeah. yeah, which is not necessarily a system I <coughs> agree with as much as the other one. But um, also there's been um, controversy over uh, the nature of whether or not clubs are allowed to meet regularly during flex, um, which has, I, I, my understanding, I guess, is that that's, the, the way it uh, used to be before COVID was that uh, teachers were required to have, uh, teachers who were receiving a stipend were required to have clubs meet during lunch or after school um, because doing it during flex or task was viewed as, I think, being paid, uh, double. yeah, double for um, the time that they were working. Um, however, last year flex was used for, as a club time, which seemed very successful to me. Um, so I was wondering what exactly was or like what exactly the steps would be to enabling meetings during flex again because so, yeah. can I take this up before, uh, yeah, before we get too too deep in the weeds and I had asked you for details so I appreciate you giving it to me Nick. but um, but I would say I think the, the thing I'm taking taking away from this operationally is just as those decisions and, and I think it is still fluid but as those decisions are finalized it's just important to communicate the what and the why of those decisions or, or even so. even in the midst of conversation just so parents can know there's conversation yep. Yep. and there's not the chatter on social media about yep. Yep. flex is going away flex is not gonna be it's gonna be in the middle of the day now you know we're not yeah. it, all these things so yep. if we can alleviate that that and would that, be great that's what I'm taking that's what I'm taking away okay. is the the communication is the key right. less than yes all of us trying to figure out yes I'm not asking you to figure flex. out obviously right. that is our principles point yep. of view but yep. just trying to alleviate and get ahead of the curve thank you communication oh. Brian yeah I just wanted to circle back with the buses so is there it sounds like there's capacity issue as far as the amount of buses they can supply right so did they give you any guidance on like when and how many buses you might be getting and when this will all be alleviated so we've had and I wish I had Nathan here because the most the last direct conversations were through Nathan yeah. Okay. Um, but we, I think it's clear that our expectation as we get back to the, I think it was 12 is what we, what we had. And I think before there was a switch at one point it was 16, but it was anyway, so it was 12, I think was the target number that we were anticipating. Uh, and then we're at nine at the moment. And they're in the, pro my understanding is that they are in the process of bringing on additional, additional drivers, but it's not an overnight thing and they got to train and they got to do a lot of other stuff. Um, but we did have some type of dialogue. We uh, clearly are expressing like, we're expecting a service that we're paying for to be provided. Um, and, um, and Nathan did have some type of date and I wish I, but it was not part of that last direct conversation. So when we bring him in, happy to again, make sure you have the most up-to-date information. But our expectation would be, you know, when we sign a contract with a third party that we're getting, we sign mm -hmm. a we get for those services. Um, I think there's a, a certain amount of <clears throat> sympathy because I think they, I think we are very pleased with everything they're trying to do because we threw a bunch of stuff at them, you know, the second week I came on, it was like, oh, by the way, we think we want you to do Gundalo. Oh, by the way, the city would love you to do community campus. Oh, by the way. So in the midst of, so I think we are right now as a, as a uh, purchaser of services, confident that they are working really hard to provide us what we need and are sympathetic that in an environment where it's really hard to hire staff, um, that, they're doing the, that they're doing what we'd expect them to do. If this was to prolong for a long period of time, I think we're in a different conversation. But at the moment, I think we're comp we are confident that they're partnering with us in the ways in which we want them to to, to solve the problem. So, okay. 
I, but I do not have the definitive timeline. So. I believe we've had a good rapport with our with the bus company in the past. I mean, the past few years. Do people recall that? Yes. That, um, Nathan has said Nathan they worked really well with us last year. Yeah. 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 I just had a follow up question on the buses, if yeah. I may. But I don't. Um, I, I was just curious. And again, you can just have Nathan tack this onto his bus <laughs> update. The city was putting in sidewalks in some places, and I know at one point Nathan was touching base to kind of overlay like our bus stops with where they're putting in sidewalks hoping that the two would match and if I recall correctly there was some discussion around that that might alleviate or change how many buses we need I didn't know if that ever yeah. happened or if that impacted anything or I so. not conversations okay, I've been so, part of okay that would be yeah. just if he could just add that yeah. update I'm curious where the sidewalks ended up Thank you. Carrie? Thank you to you both for making it through this first very <laughs> difficult time period um, and still being here with us. Um, I think that my, so one, I wanted to kind of connect the staffing with the paras and the busing with also the resignation with related to childcare issues mm -hmm. and, and just childcare being sort of a very difficult thing. Um, and just, you know, I, I think of this like beautiful way in which we could offer a position that is a bus, bus driver and a para in the in between time, and we offer childcare or something. I just, I, and, and I know it sounds crazy, but I just wonder if you have thoughts um, from your prior districts of kind of what we need to be doing because the childcare issues are going to just keep expanding and yep. also. The bus and para issues are continue to increase. So, I, so I, I think, and I, if you saw my little blurb last week to the community, like we're in, we're a little bit insulated in terms of our in terms of our ability to recruit and retain folks. Um, you know, we when, when I talk to colleagues in less affluent uh, portions of, of the state. They're worried about opening their doors uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, do we have enough staff to to legally cover our duty of care? Um, we are not in that position, but you know, if you go on our site, we have all these all these jobs that are available. There's there's not a ton of jobs that are uh, professionally licensed folks at the moment, mm -hmm. but it's coming. Um, this wave is going to hit us just like it's hitting everyone else. We're getting a little bit of a reprieve, I think. Thinking about those types of, and we've been having some conversations because we do have partners that could put us in a position to consider, you know, benefits like childcare being provided to staff um, would be quite the draw for a variety of different roles, whether those are those professional positions or it is positions where if you're a paraprofessional, it might be a wash for you to work for us right. and pay for childcare, mm -hmm. or it might even it might not even be a wash. Right. You know, you're probably going to cost cost you more. Um, so you'd only come to us for the purposes of receiving benefits, probably, and not actually a salary, because all the salary is going to go to childcare. Uh, so I think those are the types of things we're going to have to explore as, you know, as a as a district. What's our opportunity to partner, whether it's with the with the city, or with you know with programs like Peak or the CTE program where we do some of this work to provide some of those positions and opportunity to access that stuff so that people are like, yeah, it's worth it for me to take a job with the school district and perform these roles. So I had some very cursory yeah. initial conversations with some folks who might be in those positions, but people are thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like this is something we really need to be be considering and really be tr and considering sooner rather than later, like in the next hiring cycle, are we in a position to offer some of those some of those things? Or even sooner with all these support positions. I don't know that we have a sooner solution because a lot of those, a lot of those folks that we partner with are also understaffed, um, and so their ability just to provide no, kind of normal services is is pretty limited right now. Um, but I think we need to be thinking about how do we how do we do that in partnership with with those folks and internally to try to make those things happen. Because otherwise, we're we're create we're, we have jobs that in the current environment people are obviously saying I don't want. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and uh, that's probably, you know, if things stay the same, that's only going to get worse for us and not better. And is there a relation, is there, 
are there instances where it would make sense for you know someone who is qualified as say a bus driver and a para or a bus driver and a you know um uh, nutrition attendant or I don't I, right. whatever that food service food service, yes. food service, work. Food service. Yes. Um, it, you know like you want to do both of these jobs and here's a like small bonus every month I, I don't I'm just right. like it, but I do think that in you know you asked for time to get your feet under you which we haven't given you but I think yeah. as the budget comes up yeah. in January I mean I think um, it would put us in a good place to be thinking more about the long-term offerings that are going to keep a workforce here, I think, as well. So. Yeah, I, I think within this field, the, the ability to maintain an maintain a efficient and effective workforce is going to be the issue of the next decade. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and if we're not thoughtfully thinking about it now and taking action steps, you know, it's going to get worse for us, and then we're going to be in panic mode, trying to trying to do other things. So I agree. I totally agree with you. If I could mm -hmm. just that way too. just just to be fair to both sides of the right, table. Right, right, right. Uh, okay. 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 I just first we have not Liz, that I want to skip Lisa, you, but is your hand raised? I had a quick Liz. thing following on what Hope said, right. but I can let. But let Liz go first, then you, and I saw Danielle Danielle's hand up. All right. I have a couple comments and a question. Um, first comment is, and I probably shouldn't be saying this for the record, but I graduated in 05. And in 05, uh, we weren't parking at the high school and we were using the trail. So uh, maybe a rude awakening for the businesses there. I don't know if they just haven't dealt with it with COVID, but that's always been a thing. Um, and so just so you know. What do you mean so there's a trail between the high school and the businesses um, off of Route oh, 1. Oh, I, I, so I know what you mean. folks okay. would park elsewhere other than the high school. So um, this has always been it. I get it. It's always okay. been a situation. Um, but hey, free parking. Or, you know, back then if you were um, a younger student, maybe you didn't qualify for a parking pass. So um, that's how we got in. Um, in our friends' cars. <laughs> Um, all right, and then as far as the paras go, I guess we had voted, I thought maybe it was a vote or, or maybe it wasn't a vote, but we increased the para rate at some point during COVID. And so I guess I'm curious of whether that needs to be reconsidered again. And I don't know how that coordinates with um, contracts, um, but uh, there may need to be a reconsideration about what we're paying given um, businesses in the area for the same you know, experience uh, paying a higher rate so um, I would just throw that out there and I guess my question would be um, what were we do previously doing with Gundalo and I guess my comment or just after school care and my comment in general is that we've never bust to the rec department we've never bust to go to a one-time once a week program where mom you know mom or dad are coming to you know our babysitter are coming to get the kids so um, the only time that I could think of that maybe we did something like that um, was the after-school buses or um, busing from the middle school to New Heights program when New Heights was there. Right. So the reason why I say that is because I think everywhere is so short-staffed right now that I think child care needs to be a priority um, in busing to Gundalo. So I don't know how we were doing it last year, but if there's some way that is not being done this year, I would definitely take a look at that and and just ask that you know I obviously want to support the rec department but at the same time I mean rec departments charging a fee you know they're not I don't know that they're hitting the target audience of people that need after-school child care mm -hmm. um, and you know maybe that's another topic for Brian on the rec department board um, to address as far as um, affordability of rec programs because I feel like they were a lot less back in my day or back even when my you know five years ago um, as far as accessibility goes but I don't know that you know I really would hope that our schools would take uh, consideration into the child care issue and make that a priority too so thank you Lisa did you have something two super fast things um i wanted this was a nathan question so i apologize it's another minor bus thing but as people who used to go to high school with liz uh, know about the drag racing in tuscan market oh, there's I, been I some don't know if we've done they're that. not really drag racing but <laughs> there's they're been not. some serious don't, concern don't blow it out of proportion <laughs> no but there's been some serious concerns from families that have the bus there. stop there mm -hmm. with younger children about safety as a larger number than normal of slightly less than completely experienced drivers are 
rushing to get to school on time would be the correct way of raising that. So I just think to put on our radar whether we need to have potentially a, you know, I know we don't have enough crossing guards either, but <laughs> there's been some safety concerns for families who are using those bus stops right there about the amount of traffic that is, is now the, there because of what the What bus stop, is that Ledgewood or the um, Winchester place? Yes. Yeah. Okay because there's been a lot of traffic. Um, and I would echo the childcare concerns are huge. And we also cut back on a lot of after school programming that was free or very low cost at all of the elementary schools during the pandemic for many good reasons. But I would definitely like to see what we need to do to bring some of that back. <laughs> and that's not like a permanent childcare solution for everybody, but there were several programs that would run for many weeks at a time and at least give families like one or two days a week of coverage at low cost on site without transportation. And I don't know what the status of those are. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I don't it's know very the history. Early in the year. Yeah, I don't know the history of, of which programs and that it's, type of thing. I yeah. know what we've been doing, what we tried to do is, is uh, over the course of the summer was to, and part of it was based on conversations, at maybe our first board meeting about this need for after school care is we tried to, when we had partners who were trying to offer something, we tried our best to make it work. And even with three less buses than we're supposed to have, and like we're, you know, so we, if there were opportunities to, to have people either come in or us to bus people out, we've been trying to like take everything that we possibly can and, and make it work. So we're, we're open, we're open for those things. And if people have either received, have, if there's any thought from folks who used to partner with us that maybe we're still in a mode where we wouldn't do that as a result of the pandemic, we're, we're, we're you know, we knew we're in a different period of time where we're reopened to those those possibilities. Can I, can I just add a little blip on to Lisa? I'm sorry to interrupt, but just to give you some background, I know from a Dondero perspective or elementary school perspective that there were these after school PEEP programs. And my understanding was that with COVID, they didn't want folks coming into the school and the people doing the programs were usually teachers after school or parents that were offering some sort of, you know, fun art thing or, or comic thing. And, and so with COVID, people were limited coming into the school, but then also I think there was a teacher burnout aspect mm -hmm. um, of the after school piece. And so that's really what was affected, I think, in some of these programs that were solely run by teachers and volunteers, parent volunteers. Okay, any other comments? Uh, oh, Danielle. A little bit of that was actually, of what I was gonna say was covered. I think absolutely teacher burnout is part of it, right? That teachers were stepping up and taking some of these programs or coaching positions or all of these things that were available to our community uh, members to have someone watch their child. However, we're now in a place where those parents are working double to make up. And so that need is increasing as we're, our availability is decreasing. Um, so I would propose that we start getting creative about how and what we are offering. Um, I know that we have a teacher at the high school who runs an excellent um, program, getting our kids into the community and doing service work and volunteer work. I would love to see, I mean, we've talked about it in our school. We are very excited to get over to community campus for that reason, the partnership of our older students working with younger students under the supervision of maybe one person. And I know that would take time to get set up and move forward, um, but I know our daycare program that is here, kids are, are competitive to get into that program. And would that not solve a problem of in staff childcare? I mean, we lost our um, office executive because of that same reason. She was only here for a short period of time. I have talked to other teachers who could not return from maternity leave or other things because there's no openings in the Seacoast. Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't want to or can't afford it, it's that there are zero opportunities. So if we can look for ways to address that in-house, um, either expanding programs or doing more partnerships with our older students and, and doing both during school and after school programs, it seems like a win-win. Mm. It just, I know that is also funding. I know that's the issue, but it's also organization. Mm -hmm. It just seems like all the pieces are there. We just have to put them back together. Thank you, Danielle. Okay, hope. Follow up. Um, I, d I just had a quick question, a couple of questions. One around the, Liz's comment around para 
pay. I thought we only bumped, temporarily bumped sub pay and it's still bumped up, but I didn't think we ever put a bump on the para pay, did we? In the last negotiation, didn't we? I, um, I don't know. Not no, no, I mean from that contract. Oh. After that contract, I think when we were looking at um, para and sub pay for the need of hiring, we only bumped sub pay. I so believe that's true. I know that we're looking to go back into para negotiations, but I, I do wonder if there's any room in the budget from Magic Man Nathan to move some dollars around um, <clears throat> to offer. I wouldn't say a sign-on bonus because that didn't go over so well with <laughs> our current people. And then some people, you know, are concerned that you get a sign-on bonus, you stay for a minute, and then you're gone. But yeah. to to offer to bump even if it's a temporary bump till negotiations can start because right now the reality is, you know, people that are qualified, they can go to Target and make more money and also get benefits. So, you know, if, if we're in that big a desperation. And then secondly, I just wanted to go back to the parking. A couple of things have, have occurred to me. I, I know it's always been an issue. You guys are an encyclopedia of knowledge um, from when your kids were there. So. It did seem that there was a time period, though, where we had adequate parking for students besides the ones that were trying to park somewhere else, you know, for free or whatever. Um, so I just wondered if we could look into that history and see, did the process change? Do we have more teachers now that are also parking or what the past history was like? And I also was curious around um, accessibility for funds for parking for students that might need parking spaces and have cars to get to jobs or get to other things but may not be able to afford the fee. I, I don't know uh, myself and I would like to know is that, you know, is, is there based on um, annual house, in, household income, is that opportunity funds, is there funds at in the principal account or anything, are we even thinking about accessibility from an equitable standpoint, I guess is what I'm asking, so. Okay, thank you. Can I jump on that too? I don't know how many of you have like driven through during the school day. There are a lot of spaces open and available. That's which, because students leave. So at all at, yeah. at times of the day? Well, not all times of the day. Well, right now they're not supposed to leave until yeah. I think they changed that too, right? And they, like they're, Quarter this one year they're waiting for quarter one uh, progress reports before you can leave. It's even a yeah, change for seniors like that. that they're having a heart attack about. But um, <laughs> but but I, teachers also leave. Sometimes they have appointments and stuff. But I know that's come up many times. But students have <clears throat> internships and other things. So or they don't bring their cars. Like I know my son has a parking space and. The person next to him has only parked there one day and it's been free every day since then so um you know okay well we have some things to discuss and talk about and research and nathan's well, gonna be busy yeah nathan's gonna be <laughs> poor busy. nathan we move on so that we can uh you know uh yes. move on with the agenda okay um thank you zach for that school opening report um, old business, we don't have anything under old business, um, so we'll move on to new business. And we have the consideration and approval of the Association of Portsmouth School Administrators Agreement. Um, can I have a motion to approve that contract? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Is everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. And then we have the consideration and approval of the Association of Portsmouth Clerical Employees Agreement. Um, do I have a motion to approve Move that approve. contract? Thank you, Ian. Second? Second. Brian, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Now we have the consideration and approval of employment. And I'll turn that over to you, Zach. So you have um, three separate positions. Uh, we had an opportunity to have some discussion in uh, non-public uh, concerning uh, these roles. Um, I will, the one that I'll speak to is the, the last of the three, just to make sure that we're, we're transparent about what's happening with our uh, Italian program at the lower grades. Um, my understanding is there is a there is a standing verbal commitment from the Italian consulate to fund half of the, the position. Um, that 
I, I haven't had official um, confirmation of that yet um, from the consulate. I have no reason to believe that that's not going to occur. Uh, but uh, the board funded half of the position um, for uh, this particular role with the hope that the consulate would provide the other half. So at the moment, what has been done is, as I um, have told the board, what's been done is we've built a full-time schedule for um, the, the uh, teacher uh, to be working at uh, the elementary schools, but that runs through halfway through the school year at the moment, and then would be, you know, the the continuation of that would be contingent upon the receipt of funds from the Italian consulate, which we have every you know, reason to believe will occur. Uh, but the other ones are, um, the other ones are just um, replacing uh, other positions. One, the ESL, uh, ESOL position is someone who's on a one-year leave of absence, and the other is the um, filling the role that you just accepted the resignation of um, in the science department. Okay, are there any questions about these three nominees? Yes, Carrie. I'm um, just noticing, sorry, I didn't see this before, but um, with the approval for the Italian teacher, um, the 90 day and then the salary, is it standard that our salary, um, like that's an annual salary, right, for 180 days? So the listed on the position. Uh, let's see. I, I, th I think we're. Thank you very much. Um, so in that listing, my understanding is that that is, and, I'll, and I'm, if I'm wrong, I'll, I will uh, apologize. But that is when we when we give you that, that is on the actual salary schedule, what that person right. would make. So this is that. This would be a prorated amount, not that particular okay. amount mm -hmm. that we would be initially committed to. Yes. Um, so just to be clear, so you you would not be approving, you're not approving that salary a full year contract. Days. That would be a full year contract yes. if. Okay. That was the case. Any Good other question. questions? Do we have a motion to accept these three uh, employees? So moved. Thank you, Hope. Second. Second. Thank you, Brian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, now we have the consideration and approval of policies. Um, does someone from the policy committee want to talk about these? Or um, I, I think I I mentioned before that that, that there's nothing um, really substantive about any of these changes. I don't believe they were okay. really generally just one line or. Um, one minor change that we were required to make. So, if anybody has questions, we can try to answer them. But I, any questions, Kerry? Um, I I just had a question on the vaccination mm -hmm. policy. I'm get, the religious exemption changed, and it added around an outbreak information. I'm guessing to context of where that came from. Um, I believe that came, um, you know what, I don't, I'm not, I'm actually not sure that's new. I know it's, it's out red. Okay. Um, but I know there was previously language about an outbreak. No, um, here I can speak to that. Okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Can, can you ask your question again, Carrie? Um, under immunization of students, um, on the second page under religious exemptions, yeah. there it appears that there was terminology added, but maybe that wasn't added. So it's specifically around the in the event of an outbreak, students who have been exempted from immunization, that paragraph there. Um, as far as, uh, let me see. Uh, Um, all right, where, hold on, let me find the, uh, is it the packet? 47, I think? Was? 47, yeah. Um, um, what page are we in the packet? I I'm work. trying to, like, scroll between the two. Um, but I, I will tell you, so my understanding, um, uh, as a parent who had my child on a, a, um, a different vaccination schedule, or a, a lack of better terms, um, 
you know, there's there's a name for it. I had him on a different vaccination schedule than the um, uh, requirements. My understanding, for example, if a child was not vaccinated for the chickenpox, um, that they would be removed from um, or request, you know, they would be essentially removed from the school if there were to be a chickenpox outbreak, so that it wouldn't further an outbreak. Um, is the policy in the packet? I and guess. The, what yes, it is. is. I, yeah. I just think that. I, I, I guess my question is um, if if the board could hold off on approving this one I'd like to look into it just um, to see if this was a legislative change for a requirement or where it came from um, where in the packet is it because the, is the full policy in the packet or not yes, yeah. yes. And what yes. page of what page of the PDF is it in do you want my computer it's list? JLC can you just tell me what page it is there's a link in the top Okay, so I guess it's not, it's actually not in the packet. It's not in the packet. Um, it's not in the PDF, though. Yeah, it's linked, but it's not in the packet. Okay. Um, I'm pretty certain that, I, I'm sorry I don't have the copy of the original um, policy, but I'm pretty certain that this, that we had already voted on at least some of this language, because okay. I remember that we added, um, if the people, if, um, if the student could be considered a risk to other students, Due to the fact that they hadn't been vaccinated so i know that that existed in some way and I, i'm sorry i can't tell you exactly what was changed about it maybe if we but can find it in this time we can address it maybe move discussion to other things and i'll look for it as well and if not maybe you i don't know that there's i honestly don't know if that these are i mean it, it's it obviously appears that they're edits but um, my understanding of the statute and policies in general surrounding this from five years ago um, was the exact same thing. So I don't know that there was any um, edits to this unless it was in a different section of the policy. Um, the, I have it pulled up. I have the, the hard the copy. The only edit I see that's in red, which is supposed to be following the new mm -hmm. protocol, right, is right. Um, line 26 and 7, which starts, this obligation shall begin when a student reaches three years of age and shall continue now in red until the is striped and up to 21 years of age parentheses inclusive is added strike students 21st birth and and let me just be clear um and after looking at the policy. minutes it's so basically policy. the change was is that previously you had to have a document notarized saying that you were having a religious exemption now the law has changed so that you don't have to have a document notarized um, and it takes away their notarization requirement based on what Kathleen told us in the policy meeting. So I think the language was changed not to take away that a, a student would be removed, but to, to take away this language about um, needing okay. a notarized document. Wait, 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 wait. Lisa had her hand up. Go ahead, Lisa. I agree with Carrie, and I don't think it would be too onerous on the policy committee to bring this back next time to the board with a clear citation for what policy change we're actually making so that we're all voting on something that's clear. I mean, this is a okay. big issue. I'm not opposed to it, but I do think if we're changing it for statutory reasons, it would be good to know what statute we're well, I actually, I think that what, we're, what we were trying to change here was simply these, um, the, the links to the current right, that's uh, what DHHS shows. site files. Yeah, that's what those, are the, those are the only changes I remember making, and I think that's important to change exactly. now because, because we want to be They're referring to the current right, documents so. for this year, not last year. Oh, okay. That's, um, that's also my understanding is the, so like, for example, the, the section, so in my, um, printed packet line 47 that Carrie was talking about in the event of an outbreak is within the exist the existing policy I mean, I mean I'm online looking at our existing policy yeah okay. that whole I section also. is in our existing okay. policy okay. and it may just so, have been accidentally so it, and just to highlight that the change was the signed by the child's parent guardian it the old policy had notarized right. and yes. that was that appears to be the only change Maybe, maybe the broader request is just to make sure, and maybe someone can just take a look at this to make sure the right things are hot, or the track changes are in the right, right places. Because yeah. I think it's very important that we know what the changes are quickly. Yeah, Great. 
Okay. okay, let's pull this policy out then, yeah, and we will. Or I think we're, I, I think we're okay with keeping it now. No, or, oh, no. you're okay with keeping it. Is there an expediency it? Okay. to pass it? Is there a reason that it can't be pulled? The information well, the laws yes. changed, and you don't have to have a notarized document. So I would suggest passing it and have somebody look at the edits as a review. And it also refers it. to last year's DHHS um, right. And yeah. documents. Right, you don't want to do that. Okay. Okay, so we'll keep it in and ask the policy committee to just review that for us. Yeah, okay. and confirm whether there's anything else that changed. My packet had no copy of that, but two copies of the suicide one. Oh, okay. yeah, that's, that's, what was, that's what I was so confused yeah. by. Yeah. And, and Nancy, yes. I have a question about the suicide you just link to um, you just go I link. think we, did yeah, we I talk about that. tabling this for now thing. and discussing it yes. at the next meeting, asking the policy committee to review this? Well, I sent a question, but I don't know if you guys saw it before the meeting, because the I, I policy as revised still refers to establishing the protocol by, like, May 2020, which, to the best of my knowledge, got a little bit yeah. put off by pressing other yeah. health-related needs during the pandemic. But to my knowledge, I don't think the board has ever received the original policy. No. So I would like to have this cleaned up, if we're doing it anyway, so that we specify when are we getting the actual policy and then what's the schedule for revising it. In this case, that makes sense. you mean the policy or the, or the plan? You mean the, the pl plan, I'm okay, sorry. Okay, okay, I'm just going to make sure we're Because the policy that we've been asked to approve is putting these dates that are yeah. far in the past yeah. out sure. as deadlines. I think yeah. they were supposed to have been updated. I mean, I, well, <laughs> I, I think we discussed that, but it didn't, doesn't look like it happened. And, um, and the only change to this one, besides those dates that was supposed to have been made, or was made, was the addition of the student ID cards line. Yeah. That, so it is properly noted on this copy it looks like and the student ID cards have been accomplished correct that, that uh, what do you mean mission has been the, accomplished we are in the process of having so pictures are being taken yep oh okay and, when the, and why we had confirmation yep. from the company that yep. that they'll when they get their ID cards it will, the have back. it will have it on there yep. okay yep. and that's law now too it is law yes. yep Right. And the law is just that if if we we don't have to produce student ID cards if we didn't previously produce them, but if, but we, if do we do produce them, we right. must include. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we will ask the policy. I'm sorry. Oh, just one more on that policy. It was recommended, and to note in the minutes that uh, it was recommended by the committee to include whatever language is going to be added to the IDs into the policy. Um, which has not been done. Uh, I would suggest adopting the policy to include the update, but I think this does need to go back um, and provide space, you know, if, if that's what the board wishes um, in the recommendation of the policy committee to add that language to the policy of, of what we're clearly putting on these ID cards. Um, that would be beneficial and you know if this is sent back if Lisa yeah, does have further concerns or if there's more that we want to address within this policy we could do that as well so I would suggest uh, approving it as is but also requesting that it go back to the policy committee um, <clears throat> how do people feel about that um, maybe we should just ask just the policy committee to redo yeah. it or we just send it back yeah, yeah. okay and okay, so, so can we add these to old business for our next agenda yes. item yep. in case it's not ready for approval, but we can at least get an update? I, while we're on I would that, suggest, though, approving that with the statute requirement included so that it's on there and then requesting that it also be reconsidered. So I would approve it. I would suggest the board approve it with the, the statute update so that it, it complies with statute um, and then ask that it also be um sent back to the policy committee similar to what we did last meeting with another policy we address i think my concern with that is i'd like there to be urgency to cleaning up the whole policy yeah, exactly. and i think if we solve the statutory issue that we may not get back to it because we have so many other things fair. to do in that yep. committee yep. but so i also I, think that the urgency well, that you seek is not going to be finish, liz? let lisa finish liz my understanding is we have printed the ids so we are in compliance with the law as that process is going forward like we've got the pictures we'll get the ids when they receive them they will be in compliance so we're not out of compliance with the law and that we could with some urgency perhaps get some real life based clarity around when we're going to have a policy or I'm sorry a plan in place for suicide prevention because my understanding is it's not 
done. I'm but it's not been totally in clear. So because the email has helped generate the, the <laughs> like, oh, okay, so this was done by such and such a date, and then me having connections with people about. So where is it? Yeah. And so um, and so I'm not going to definitively say. Hey, I'll say at this point, I can't definitively say there is none. Um, and, but uh, I'm still. But you can't present one I can't either. present one either. <laughs> right. So that's where I'm at. And, uh, and so, uh, so if there's an expectation that this is something we need to do, then, and the yeah. board approving it and is part really of it, And we really care too. about mental health. And there's Agreed. not a lot of kids with issues. And yeah. I just want to make sure that we're not breaking down in how we're handling it. Because we could be Agreed. doing really good work. But I'd really like to see this with some urgency cleaned up with some accountability. <laughs> Okay, so May I ask do we a oh, yes. Is it is it possible um, for us to approve this as a single I mean as a first read and then do a second reading next time and yep. vote on it then? Yes, we can do That's that. Motion, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if we <laughs> how, how those shifts can be made. You can make I edits. Will. Yeah, you can make edits before the second mm -hmm. reading. So people okay, can that might be a way to keep reading. it moving quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That keeps it alive. Okay. Yeah. So then I would move to do that. <laughs> and I also just want to be clear with the board that the policy committee, I, I understand the urgency. We do have a meeting coming up, uh, I believe this month. Um, and so obviously this this could be on the, and would be on the agenda then, regardless of whether we voted it for, for I don't know if it's due for two readings or one reading. Um, but regardless, I guess I would just, um, uh, as last meeting, showed I think there was a lack of understanding in the vote last meeting about how often the policy committee meeting or policy committee meets how long we meet for mm -hmm. and so I just would caution everybody in in trying to understand urgency or um, uh, when something could be reviewed and how quickly it could be reviewed um, within the policy committee uh, because it's not a it's not a school board meeting every other week it's you know once a month or it's almost I think we've gone a month and a half or so now between a meeting so um, if something needs to get approved I would suggest approving it um, and then sending it back so, so Liz I so totally to respect what you're saying on that but I have some I'm saying it to everybody at least not just you just yeah, so no, you're I aware. Okay. I guess what I would say is the concern is if it's a single read that you're telling us that it's not coming back again for approval so I would no, I didn't say that within anything I said. Okay, okay, okay. Vote in a single reading to approve, then it's done. So, so then you to, can send it the, back within the same to, motion. To the point of the timing, I, that was something I had brought up. I don't know if it's been discussed or where it stands. I haven't heard anything back Ooh. about the policy committee meeting and aligning more with our board um, meetings and um, if meetings could be called you know, we add extra meetings all the time, considering that the board is responsible mainly for budget and for policy, it doesn't seem like the policy committee should be meeting every month and a half. It seems like there should be urgency to cer certain things that are statutory. It seems like there should be exceptions made to move up meetings maybe every three weeks instead, because it seems like this is a continued problem of the timing of when we need policies and the gap in which the time is taking place for the policy committee to do the work. So I would like that conversation revisited amongst the policy committee, amongst our chair, co-chair, and an update on, on where that stands and, and what is the scheduling. I know everybody has busy lives, I get that. I think serve on committees I too. think from the policy committee though, there needs to be a realistic expectation from the board that you know essentially this is a once a month committee so as far as like a boom 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 we're turning it around and our sole focus is the suicide policy or our sole focus is the sports policy within our hour meeting is unrealistic so I think there needs to be realistic expectations and an understanding of what is going on in the policy committee before there's votes you know like the, the you know about like the vote last week I think there should have been an expectation or an understanding of what this actually practically looks like moving forward and how you edit policies so um, I appreciate what Hope's saying as far as meeting more and having a consistent schedule, and I, I can, you know, I think that's appropriate. At the same time, I just really the reason why I say all this is that I really want the board to understand what is what are realistic expectations of how policies move forward. Thank you. Okay, thank I you, also, Liz. Okay. Oh, Pip, go ahead. To, um, 
partially respond to hope, but also um, add something. Um, we are working on that, and we have discussed that. Um, okay, and unfortunately, I think we did end up going a long time before we could all um, end up in the same room together again. And you um, did mention that. You all okay. mentioned that. Yeah, before. and so we will, we can report on it again and, and report on where we've landed um, in terms of a, a future schedule. But I also want to point out that, that the one particular policy that we've now been discussing for months and months has taken up a, an unusual amount of time. And so I'm hopeful that without once we resolve that, that one, that good. maybe we'll be able to keep up with the rest of them a little bit better. Good point. Okay. Thank you Very for the update. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Zach. And I, and I would just just to echo whatever added. Um, I think, you know, um, it's been loud and clear from the board that IGD is like has been this very important thing in terms of prioritization. It might be helpful for the for the committee to understand whether at this moment IGD, which could absorb our next month of work, continues to be number one, or if the, su the suicide policy has supplanted that. And that's where people want us to put our attention because I think both of those things could absorb the, the next month of work, either one of them. Um, I don't think both of those will be, to, to Liz's point, even with additional meetings, I don't think both of those things will be resolved inside of the next month. I just want to clarify one thing. Like, I don't think there's like giant overhaul to the suicide policy that needs to be done. Like, I'm asking in line nine, can we have a date that's not May 31st, 2020? And can we have, you know, in line 16 a date that's not May 31st, 2020, and can yeah. we put whatever the correct date is? I don't think that needs to be a long yep. debate, and I'm trusting our nurses, our counselors, and whoever else is involved in shaping this to do what's right for the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that I'm concerned when we're getting policies that come before us for a single read in particular. I don't feel comfortable signing off on things with a single read as all done. When, yes. when it's not right. right, and I'm sorry, I just you know so, I just so do two it. readings. So I would be fine with Pip's motion to just make this a second reading and approve it as a first read, and then just clean up those things and bring it back. I'm not trying to make you all do like months and months of work on this. Okay, so can we uh, <laughs> conclude this? You get a couple more, Nancy. Oh. All right, let's try to conclude it, Liz. Um, I guess my only, and I guess. To, um, to Lisa, I guess um, the reason why I would say go ahead and, and approve this as a first reading and then um, after approving for the first reading, send it back to review is, is my understanding is that there's other things that we may want to include that is not language related and is substantive related about what we want to have in our suicide policy. Um, I, like for example, I don't think May, this date, I don't think it's relevant in saying that on this date and then every two years afterwards is how we're reviewing. I don't think we need to update that date. I think what my understanding is from what I've heard from the board and maybe the community as well is that we might have want to have more of a robust suicide prevention policy. So that is why I would say I would suggest approve this on a first reading, get the language that we need for the IDs in there and then after that we can still send it back make a motion i'd make a motion to send it back to the committee to under to review and understand if there is more robust language we want to add and include within our suicide prevention policy i think that's what we're talking about if you're rewriting the language though substantially then you're sending it back again for a first reading and a second reading well no i think my understanding of first reading and second re reading nancy and and zach to correct me if i'm wrong um is you know, if you approve on a first reading, the second reading would not be making substantial changes. It would be more so. You can make substantial changes. Substantial and changes might, and whole the board might not vote for the second reading. But I, my understanding no. for the second reading, though, would be like we would send back and say specifically what we wanted when we're sending back for the second reading. I guess that was sort of my understanding of first reading, second reading was not that we were making huge changes to this. I think what my understanding from uh, what I've been hearing is that we may actually want to take this policy and add way more to it or understand it better or really dig down a little bit deeper. And so I don't know that that's a first reading, second reading issue. I, I think that's a, it needs to go back and be redone. So I would suggest, that's why I would suggest approving it on a first reading and then making a motion to send this back to the committee to actually review 
for um, meeting the needs of our students. Why would we currently. approve it on a first reading if it's not what because it needs? You would approve if the it on language, a single reading. it automatically why goes would, back to I the I would committee. approve it on a single reading. Why would I approve on a single reading when it has outdated information in it? The dates are incorrect. I'm the not going to approve correct. that. So no, I would approve 2020, it. we're not 2020, Liz. But and the language, so from a legal standpoint, the language is saying, here's the date and we review every two years. So we're every two years. It doesn't. The date doesn't need to be updated. The what I'm saying is what? that I would approve it. On, you asked me a question, so I would approve it on a first reading, because that way you would actually have the student ID card section mm -hmm. added to the policy. The policy would be posted. It would be updated to include that. <clears throat> then you make a motion to send it back to the policy committee, and then the policy committee could take this and substantively really take a look at it. I don't think there's any harm in approving this as is, having it updated, and then later looking at what more do we want in our suicide Why policy. Why would we not just like to do that? Just like we would next. in our... Brian's next. I'm following up on my Pip. question. I'm not Brian's done. Next. Oh, I'm not done. It's not appropriate. So, um, oh. I, uh, you know, just like we did with our sports policy, and in, in, in our policy, we really took a thorough look at it. If that's really what we're wanting to do here, it would make sense to approve it as is, update the language that's required by statute, and then you would take the whole policy back and revamp it, and then come back with a new presentation of, of what updates um, were considered based on the policy. There's no harm in doing it twice. You know, I could take a policy today, we could take a policy today, approve it, have that be the policy, and 10 weeks later change the policy to update it however you want to update it. But the approval today would provide for the statutory language, then we can go back and redo. I guess okay, my thank concern you, Liz. and my Brian, lack of understanding next. is the is okay. The you first made your point, Liz. Reading. You've made your point. Yeah, Brian. I, I don't know where the motion is now. I'm a little yeah, confused, I'm totally but confused. I would I would love to make a motion to make, turn this into two readings and make a decision now. That motion's on the table from okay. Pip. So then I'll second it. Second and let's, it. let's have a discussion okay. and vote. I second okay. it, Ryan. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you're talking about just the suicide policy yes. though, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? We're Aye. approving the first reading with work, more work to be done by the policy committee and if we will vote the second reading at our next meeting or a subsequent meeting within a reasonable amount of time. So we'll have a first reading and a second reading that provides edits. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So that takes care of the suicide prevention. Thank you, Brian, for Here's making the motion. The the, yes. This is a matter of clarification. Carrie but... also had a question about the vaccine. Policy. Yes. So oh, we I haven't done that I, yet. We haven't done I felt two. that I addressed okay, my so question. Um, okay. I'm sorry that I didn't review the prior policy before bringing it up, but now that I see that that was the only change, I'm fine with that being single read. Oh. And okay, the fr we have to approve. Oh, well, I so thinking, I think the and other it is reasonable in the future the that right the now. documentation we provided was confusing. Yes, because we'll, it looked like an edit, mm -hmm. and and so what we prov uh, you know we need to, need to make sure in terms of what we're providing that is it's easily understandable yeah. what the changes were, and that document didn't do that. So, so our, our apologies. I will make a motion if it mm -hmm. suits the board to approve. Um, the other three policies numbered one, two, three on the agenda as a single reading. Second. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Thank you for a healthy discussion. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda discussion and proposal of a legislative committee proposed resolutions and continuing resolutions. I'm sorry, Nancy. Okay. I know there was no, we, we approved them, there's no discussion. I just did, did want to make a point um, within the policy meeting, meeting minutes regarding the home education instruction and access to curriculum and co-curricular programs. Um, 
having had a little bit of home experience, homeschool experience, having pulled my child and homeschooled him um, through using VLAX during COVID, it was somewhat of a surprise um, that there was not somebody that directly coordinated homeschool efforts within our district. And I don't know if that's a typical thing or if there's somebody that's generally designated like um, a curriculum coordinator or somebody that would be a liaison of sorts to homeschool students. But um, my understanding of what the law requires is that the school would provide uh, access to resources um, uh, for a, a homeschool student, which may include some textbooks or whatnot as well. And so when I um, had homeschooled, I had tried to reach out to figure out what those resources were and if I could have any access. And really the only person that I could deal with um, was the principal in bringing my child to art or, rec or recess or gym or whatever the um, extra stuff was. So I was a little bit surprised about that and I guess I was just curious if there's like what's typical per district, but I, um, I thought it might be a good idea to um, help coordinate a little bit just to have a point person that's not each building principal, somebody that could sort of keep an eye on kids that are homeschooling. Um, and that's also from a child protection standpoint too. Um, but also be able to provide those resources if there are um, opportunities for them. Okay, we can ask Zach to look into that for us. Yeah, that'd we'll, be get, we'll get back to you. All right, okay, thank you, Liz. Okay, Zach, I'm gonna turn this next agenda item over to you. Okay, so. Uh, uh, and, okay, go ahead. So, my, so my, I would say, again, I, I started to describe this earlier, and I think really this is a merging of two related concepts, and, and in our, and we probably should have separated them both out, but I think there has been an ongoing conversation um, that I think Lisa has spearheaded around the idea of the board having some vehicle for being more involved in educational policy decisions at a state level or expressing um, both tracking and then, ex and then expressing the will of the board uh, here in Portsmouth uh, to state level policy conversations. Um, so th so I know there has been some, some draft language that has moved around uh, a little bit around that. So that is one piece. As we were, dis as Margo, Nancy and I were discussing that, we also discussed we had, and maybe you can talk a little bit in a minute, Nancy, about re reaching out to some groups, trying to trying to determine, is there a model like that present in the state someplace? If so, who's doing it? What does it look like? How does it work? Um, and, um, and maybe you can speak a little bit to that. And then separately after, I'm just gonna, the, the conversation about the resolutions is really a separate thing. So maybe if we could initially start with that, yeah, and if you could speak to your conversations you had with uh, School Boards Association and Keene, I think were the two places. Yes, I contacted the School Boards Association. They said there aren't, there, there really aren't any boards that have a legislative subcommittee. Um, they, m many rely on the, the New Hampshire School Boards Association. That's one of the reasons they exist, mm -hmm. is to listen to what's going on in Concord, lobby for the school districts. That being said, that doesn't mean that we don't, we, we can have one if we decide we all want one. I talked to the Keene School District because someone had mentioned that Keene had such a committee. When I talked to the um, Paulette of the Keene School District, she said that- <laughs> The Paulette of the Keene School District. The Paulette, Paulette, all right, Paulette all right, of the Keene School District. She said that does not exist in Keene. Um, and she even put me on hold for a minute and went and asked somebody else just to confirm that that was true. So Keene does not have a legislative subcommittee under their board. Um, so I know Lisa did some research into that. I don't know if you want to talk about that, about school boards that have had subcommittees or had people interested in it. I wasn't sure that Keene had a committee. They do take positions, not all the time, but sometimes. And I have Makes seen sense. in certain situations where I think that their voice carries a certain weight that can be quite supportive of policies that we might hypothetically agree with. I mean, not always, but 
Um, in many other states across the country, it is quite mm -hmm. common for school boards to have a legislative committee. Sometimes they fold it into their policy committee, which I would be really hesitant to do given, <laughs> you know, how <laughs> overburdened that group already is. Um, not a good idea. And usually the intention is not to be, you know, overly political, but mainly to track bills, to do a really good job, and especially in Concord, things move really, really fast relative to even many other state legislatures in terms of how narrow a window you have to influence the debate yeah. you know I mean things go very quickly to the floor to the committee you can have a vote on it the next day you know the conference process is very convoluted and there's been a lot of le fast-moving legislation particularly in the last few years that I think you know some of which we're kind of dealing with now that I think can really impact classroom instruction in a way where we might have opinions and maybe not always weigh in um, but my thought about this was if we can have some representation from the board, some representation from, you know, the administrative level, whether it's Zach or Patty or someone they designate, and some representation from the union or someone they designate, you know, so that people have a, a quick moving ability to say, okay, this just went out, you know, from the committee, it's going to go to the House floor tomorrow. If we think that it's something that's great or particularly terrible, do we want to weigh in? And we may not always. Like, you know, I mean, and I don't think that we want to get into every single thing, you know, but there's a lot of stuff that came through last year that's going to be back again. Yeah. Mm. And some of it that could be tricky. And I mean, I want to walk a good line. We're nonpartisan. You know, we're not here to represent political parties. We're here to represent our community and our teachers and our kids. So I don't want it to become like cuckoo. But I mean, I think even just having three people, you know, somebody from the board, somebody from the administration and somebody who can represent teachers would be, you know, kind of a sufficient working group. And I don't think any statements would ever be put forth unless it was put to a full vote of the board. But I mean, I guess that's my broad thinking about Do this. You, would you like to make your motion and we can discuss so it? So I had a motion and I did actually give it to you guys yes, to put into the I, agenda, but it didn't it get didn't there. Make it. So yeah. I yep. can read I, it. Um, it I just, just I got a sentence. It this, I got it this afternoon. Oh, but you no, I had it. emailed it to you guys before. It just didn't oh. get into the packet. But sometimes that happens. <laughs> um, but it was a motion to form a school board legislative committee um, to be comprised of the superintendent or designee union designee and one school board man one school board member um, and I think that's the motion I think we can discuss you know what the purpose of it would be separately but I feel like the more words we put into the motion the more confusing it would get I mean in my head it would be to track legislation report to the board on developments and if there's a unanimous you know agreement within that committee of people to ask the board to consider taking a position then it could be brought to the board I mean, that's the basic. Okay. But so Lisa I made would, the motion. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second. Oh. Okay. Ian, a pip. Okay. I think there were some questions over there. Okay. Though. I don't want to. Kerry, Hope, and then Liz. Is in looking at the materials that were linked to on the agenda, um, do we have a delegate for the school no, board? We have system? to discuss that. We were going to discuss that after this. <laughs> we need a delegate. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So I guess I guess that would be so with that question I think the member of that committee would probably be the delegate. The and more delegate. than one person can go. Right. Well, it, but it I, I think I think part of it is just keeping up with and keeping it like reviewing the stuff from the New Hampshire the school board association and limiting it that even though I, yeah anyway I Thank you. We'll talk about the delegate and that okay. will address my question. Oh. So I guess I, I, while I really appreciate the idea of where this is coming from, um, I guess I would like to have more discussion before we form a committee. I feel like sometimes we jump the gun to forming committees without substance and fault around how it's going to look long term. Um, and we're already in review of one committee that are we going to be keeping or what is it going to be doing? I guess also it's important. I, I heard you say it many times. I just want to reiterate it that like the intent behind it is not to drive legislation. I think there's a lot of people in our community that, you know, that's a concern or not just our community, but societies today of where school boards are 
line. So I, I do think we've done a good job of staying bipartisan, but really looking at things around you know safety and other issues with our students. But there is a lot coming out of legislation that's, that's just moving very quickly, which leads me to feel like there needs to be another step in the process of something the communication committees talked about a lot of um, communicating out to our parents about legislation that's coming down the pike and making them aware because our parents are busy they're not tracking they don't get a lot of the information that we receive that's right in front of our faces on a regular basis and i think a lot of our parents want to know um, what's coming down the pike before something gets passed that impacts their child in a way that they may not have approved had they been informed. So I, I don't think that we can have any kind of committee if there's not going to be a component of communicating out. And I think even if there's not a committee, that still needs to be happening. Um, you know, I know the communication committee had asked many times that the superintendent's new newsletter had maybe a policy corner that showed, highlighted our own policies that were under review as well as legislative policies from state that was coming down that might be something that they want to look at and I, I get that our public has different views on politics and some are more involved in than others but I think it's our responsibility as educators to educate our public about what can impact their students their children um, versus us having a committee that's making those decisions without informing them as well. Okay, I think Liz was next, then Brian, then Pip. Okay, a few points. Uh, just for a fun fact, my supervising attorney um, at DCYF is on the Keene School Board, and so I will follow up with her and ask her um, uh, what her, but I assume it's her, because she's a longtime member and she's very outspoken. So I will I assume she's part of uh, whatever Keen is doing over there. So I'll, I'll, I will follow up with her and ask her about it. Um, I guess I was curious as to legislation. I know, Lisa, you're saying it comes quick, um, but it does seem like, you know, I know you've been really on top of it. If you weren't really on top of it, I don't know that a lot of us would be unless it was in the news. And so although it does come quick, I, I guess I was curious what other mechanisms there are for policy, whether the DOE has somebody that they, um, uh, you know, like DHHS that reviews policies that are coming up. The federally. NHSBA is our the school, board the school board association. That, that's the Listen, avenue. I know. Okay. I'm, I'm speaking though. Um, but and you so asked I understand the that the, any, that's not the answer to my question. Um, I guess the NHSBCA obviously does, but I think um, other avenues within state government um, like the DOE would follow federal policy changes as well as possible state policy changes that are coming down and there's usually somebody within the State Department like the DOE that there there would be a delegate there um, that could communicate what might be coming down and so I guess I just wondered if there was any sort of funnel there at the DOE um, I obviously know the DOE has been a bit messy as well as uh, other departments, but I guess I wondered if there was any funnel of somebody um, there that monitors policy because there is somebody at DHHS that monitors policy. Um, and, and I guess uh, I also, with that being said, we also have our local representatives, and so I guess I wondered what their obligation or what their ability to convey um, those policy changes or what's coming up and what they're voting on to us and if there's a way that we can open lines of communication with them um, regarding this. And, and I guess my hesitation as far as creating a committee is creating a committee that's small in that respect and having the ability for the board to have a full weigh-in versus one board member, you know, superintendent and a, and a, um, and a school representative um, or school union representative to weigh in and make the suggestion given that you know we're all varying degrees of how we feel and is that one school board member really representing um, the thoughts of um, the board or um, a thought of how we should weigh in so I that would be my hesitation I appreciate the sentiment but I guess I just wondered if there are other avenues that we could um, go about addressing this issue thank you Liz Brian so um, you know for me this is uh, kind of a slippery slope in the the political realm and I think the makeup of that committee committee would honestly determine what we <laughs> what what bubbles up and I would I would believe that it's really the most politically charged stuff would be what we end up talking about 
I know this board has talked about resolutions before. Mm. It's always been kind of uh, it, it. Basically, I feel like it's going to be make us more contentious in, in many mm. ways. Um, I do like the idea of communicating out to the public uh, because you know creating advocates that way seems a lot more natural thing. And also, um, as Elizabeth pointed out, you know we if we're going to vote. You know, it's really hard for us to get together to do these votes to actually put out a resolution. So I would prefer if there was a committee that it was really tied to the communication committee somehow where they're getting out and um, getting out to the public what, what's going on. That's how, how I'd prefer it, I'd, you know, not being something where we create resolutions. I think it's uh, it just goes too quick and it could become politically charged. Even in, even within our organization of this board. Thank you, Brian. Pip, did you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, um, I think I, I, my understanding is that the primary purpose of it would be to keep us a, abreast of what is happening in the legislature and that impacts schools. And personally, I really like that idea because I find that I don't have the time to stay on top of that and do what we do here. Um, and so I would love for somebody who does have that time to be able to bring those summaries to us or bring our attention to something that will impact our schools and, and our community. Um, I hear what everybody is saying about becoming political, um, but I think that it could be argued that the, the choices we make here and the discussions we have now are also political. I mean, we, we have differences of opinion here and and we managed to come to agreements on what is best for our students. And so I think what I am understanding about this committee, if it were to exist, is that it, would, it wouldn't be making recommendations very often unless it was something that you know, we all agreed was critical for our students. And that's happened a few times already without a committee. Um, but, uh, um, but I think that, I don't think, I don't imagine it generating many um, you know, many actions on our part, but instead just making us all a little bit more aware of what, what's happening on the state level um, in, in the political arena so that we can be more informed. Um, and then I would just add that I, I do really like the idea of it serving as a way to communicate out to the public and to our constituents, because I think you, you're absolutely right, Hope, that, that people need to know mm -hmm more of what's going on and I think we're a logical place for them to hear that information from when it pertains to schools. Okay, we have Carrie and then Hope. I, um, I you, in general, support the, um, Lisa's motion. I'm wondering if maybe hearing some of the feedback and the discussion, that's been really great, it could be a working group or an ad hoc like policy development because I do understand the concern about voting on making a new committee without having what that scope is. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa, would that be something that you would be yeah, I open mean, to meeting with a group of folks to sort of sketch out what the purpose you, and the mission is? Yeah, or? I mean, my intention was that we would very rarely get to the level of spending time in this room debating like exactly how to have a policy statement, but more that we can be more on top of things. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's coming down the pike, like a potential opportunity for voters in Portsmouth to set caps on our school budget, or, you know, like different funding mechanisms for homeschooling and private schooling that could affect our budget. You know, so there's things that come up that, yes, they're political, but they're absolutely pertinent to how we run our schools. I mean, those are just two examples of things that I'm hearing will be probably coming back in the next session. Um, but yeah, I think that. I would be happy to just have a conversation later and table this and bring it back to the board. I mean, the legislature is not even coming back until January, so it's not like we have to solve this tonight. But I think if it's an ad hoc working group or it's a temporary committee, I mean, I don't know what that would look like, but I'm not opposed to it. I mean, my intention was mainly to pay closer attention, mm -hmm. to do exactly what Hope's saying, like get the information out to people. So if there are people who are teachers or parents or students who want to be better informed, we can serve just as a conduit for that information and people can do with it what they will. Um, 
but I do think I don't like the process of bringing those rare resolutions to the board as it's unfolded previously. Like, I think we would be better served when we do want to have a statement of having a mechanism for formally drafting it so that it can be voted up or down without quite so much uh, <laughs> confusion about what we might be getting into, I guess. Sorry. I don't know. Okay, Zach. Oh, so, hope you can go after Zach, okay? I was, uh, I, I think one of the things to explore would be what, um, <clears throat> What is the uh, what are the services that are provided by the New Hampshire School Boards Association, <laughs> and where um, where are there gaps? So let's understand that in a deep way because I think you've got um, Bear Christina at the School Boards Association who is constantly in Concord, moving between committees, having conversations on the fly, and then sending out either regular, kind of regular communication to, to member school boards uh, and when the school boards association feels that it is, that fast moving stuff is happening, like alerts, like this is happening this afternoon, if you are concerned about this issue and you need to contact your representatives today. Um, you know, those are the types of things that are being generated by, I, I don't know about our ability to replicate that or do that better um, but I do think there's an, I, there's an interest in how do we keep some of those things front and center. The other thing I think we should explore, because I don't understand it in, in um, depth, is the this resolution process. Because I think, and Brian was talking about this before, that our ability to like respond on the fly, like lightning respond to what is happening in the midst of conference committees and whatever is limited. Our ability to be part of the conversation from the school boards association saying this is what school boards believe is, is valued in the state um, as a touchstone for um, people in the legislature and then to be able to refer back to that and have Portsmouth informing that because they have a document of perennial we as a state school boards association our members believe blank about what should happen in ed policy and I it sounds like Portsmouth as an entity hasn't been heavily involved in in that kind of process of developing resolutions. So even just us being at the table to be part of that process, I think would be a step, a significant mm -hmm. step. And we might have a perspective which is important. And if we're doing that at this time of year where now we're, you know, they're talking about approving resolutions that have already been developed, we would well in advance of the session say, these are some things we want fellow school boards across the state to also endorse. This is the Portsmouth perspective on those particular things, and it's well before the politics of the of the session that we're out there, but we're also then informing that informing that conversation. I think that is a I think the better. Now I'm still growing my understanding of that process, but I think for us to really make sure we're really kicking the tires on all the different avenues that are available to us through the school boards association and to make sure that we are heavily involved in influencing that work could be a good initial entry point. Um, for us where we're still having our voice be heard. And we haven't been involved up until now very much in that at all. Right. Well, not as a board. Okay. So okay. I will say as a board member, I have been at Concord many a times. And I will say that legislators have come up to me and asked even before I was a board member, where does Portsmouth stand on this? We want to hear from Portsmouth. Um, and, and so that is not something that they 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 desire but they don't always receive it i will also say i'm very big on collaboration so i think you know this is a perfect place to look to our local representatives david muse is super super collaborative of putting information out and staying on top of what's happening in the legislation i would love to see him brought into this conversation and see how he might if he has the time, be willing to work as you know part of his service of keeping us better informed. He's great at keeping the public informed on things on his Facebook page. Um, I know not everyone's on Facebook, but he often puts out things. We've received letters from him when there's really pressing issues that you know he has concerns about that he wants us to make sure that we are aware of that's coming up in legislation so I think he's a very good local resource um, and there's there's many others because you know Portsmouth is not only represented by Portsmouth we have Bry, we have Greenland there's there's many other reps that I have gotten to know from my time in Concord but I, I think that we do have some other resources that 
could inform us in this situation. Thank you, Hope. Okay, Liz, and then I'm gonna have a comment and then we're gonna take a vote. Um, I guess I'm wondering before we vote, if we could talk about this delegate situation that's um, within the packet of um, New Hampshire School Board Association wanting a delegate. I guess I'm wondering if part of this could be resolved and, and the reason why, and just as a side note, I guess I'm concerned with having this small group because I, I do realize that um, teacher association may be different than what the school board wishes may be at times. Um, they take their own positions. There's a New Hampshire Teachers Association that takes a position. And so they are. They also have their own avenue um, where we're sort of the school board, the school board association. So I guess I'm wondering if if we could talk a little bit before we vote about this delegate situation and if, um, if, if this process could be relieved a little bit or completely to some extent if we were to have this delegate and then create some sort of um, section within our agenda that provides the delegate have an update and have some sort of discussion about, you know, apprising the school board of, of everything that's on the table or, you know, the important highlights that from the school board association to some extent, um, if that may relieve some of it and, you know, or if we could add something to the policy committee meeting where the delegate provides an update there, or, you know, 15 minutes, you know, I don't know. So I guess based on what the needs are, I guess, and I say all of that because I think practically speaking, the times that we've done resolutions in the past, it's been, you know, either the Teachers Association doing some sort of resolution or, um, you know, I know Lisa had come to us previously and we had done a resolution, but I think, you know, it was, it was pretty, you know, they, we say it happens quickly, but I think it was a publicized situation. So um, everybody was sort of up to speed at some point about what was going on. Um, and there were other school boards signing on to it. So it wasn't just like us saying, you know, hey, this is an issue. It was, there was quite a few people. So uh, with all that said, I guess I'm hoping that we could talk about this delegate situation before we take a vote um, to understand more about what that is. Okay, well, we, that's the next item on the agenda. We we're going to resolve this item first. And I would just like to say that I'm in favor of this committee. Um, having served on the city council, I was on the legislative committee of the city council for two years. And it, 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 it was great. I mean, we got to know all about what was going on in Concord. Um, we went to Concord a couple of times to testify for certain um, bills. One of the big things Portsmouth is concerned about is the rooms and meals tax. You know, Portsmouth contributes the most to the state and we get just a little pittance mm -hmm. back. Oops. So that's something that that committee fights for every year. If the statewide property tax were to come back, that, was, that would be something that would be perfect for this committee. And the city committee would fight for that too. So I'm, I'm in favor of this. I think it's great if we have this group that comes together that examines all the issues that are in Concord and then makes recommendations to the school board, we might not support that subcommittee's recommendation and we might support that, re uh, that recommendation. And I think Lisa's right that it's not gonna be something that, that there's 10 things for us to consider at every meeting. There isn't that much that will come up that will really be of concern. Last year we had one item that came to us that was of concern. So I think I think it's a I think it would be a great subcommittee for this board to have. Nancy, can I just ask a question about this? Because I hear like a lot of good feedback in the room about this, and it's not um, an emergency that we set it up right this second. Like it wasn't necessarily my intention to try to jam this through. Like I'd rather have it be a group that if we decide to do it, that everybody mostly feels like it's gonna be effective and serve the purpose that we want. I don't object to the idea that Carrie was saying about making it ad hoc if that's a distinction that makes people feel more comfortable or making it more of a sort of bill tracking group or a group that's responsible for communicating things out. So, I mean, I'm, I mean, the original motion didn't really specify that it was gonna like make a bunch of resolutions. It was simply to set up the group. So I just wanna sort of circle back to the idea that it sounds like there's also some question in the room about whether like just having three people in the room is the right mix. But that was what the original motion was and my intention there was just to have a small group of people who could actually functionally find time to have a mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. in a timely way about things if it's necessary or meet 
by email without having a quorum. I mean, that was my only thought about that. It wasn't to make unilateral decisions on behalf of the board in any way. Um, so I don't know the history of if we do form a committee, if the motion is just to form the committee. Um, Could it be a committee development group? <laughs> I don't I, know I, what that means. It's not time to form. It's time to to have a few more conversations yeah, no, I'm not around trying it, to rush it. And, I hear what and everybody's saying. Determine Want where it needs to, table to sit. It then but for, I pull it back. Mm. But then I would like to make sure that because what I had tried to do was put in the agenda packet like how it could be structured and work, and that didn't go in. I think due to some mm -hmm. miscommunication. I, yeah, I, I, and I think that everybody might feel better about that as a starting point. Okay. Put it in again. Is that yep. acceptable? Because yep. I don't want anyone to feel like I, if we I, do it, we should feel good about I it. I think that's a good idea, but I think can you make that presentation at our next meeting or the first meeting in October or just so we can um, get 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 it moving? Yeah, I don't I'm, want it to die. No, I don't want it to die either, and I would definitely bring it back. But what do you guys think? Because, I mean, my intention was to have you have a role in it and not be pushing forward some sort of agenda that's making your life harder. <laughs> you I'm, know, like, I'm happy to help in the process of reaching out to David and seeing what he has already okay. and what we could draw from or other resources. I've already done a good deal with that so. hope, so I'm happy to share more of okay. that. Why don't you forward. make a presentation at the first meeting in October? Are you comfortable with that, or do you need more time than that? I'm not uncomfortable, Nancy. I'm just trying not to dominate it too much. I mean, I, Zach, I, I, I'm to... just interested in the, like, again, I'm, I'm one of the people who has articulated that this group and this community has an important voice, right. I think, in helping shape New Hampshire educational policy, uh, and when and if this community is not present, other communities will drive the mm -hmm. statewide agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, hearing what Hope said, I'm, I'm not surprised that people are like, where's Portsmouth mm -hmm. on blank? No, I've heard that About too. anything. Um, so I, I think it's just trying to figure out what is, what's the right vehicle to do that. Right. And, um, and whether we need to create a new group and is that the way to do it? Or is it a, it, so some of it, it could be just, it's not even, it could be not having a new group, but just having part of our agenda is, here's the latest, uh, really focusing on, here's the latest update from NH, um, the School Boards Association around what is in the pipeline right now. Um, let's make sure we're cognizant of it. And here's, do we have, you know, gee, Zach, how would X, Y, or Z proposal have operational impact on what it is we're trying to do and our mission and vision of the, for the school district? You know, I mean, so, there's lots of ways in which we can, that may or may not be a committee where this group can, can become more active. In, or that could be a leg of the communication committee of communicating information mm -hmm. out as well, potentially. Well, we have a motion on the table. What shall we do? Um, Lisa, what are you comfortable <laughs> with? I, um, okay, so considering you're the one that made the motion. Uh, no. Nancy, can I make a brief, brief comment? I just want to respond to what you questions said. Questions out to Lisa right now. I know, but you, all, you but spoke out of turn, too. Questions out to Lisa well, okay, right now. Let's, know, but... let Lisa answer the question first. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to be cognizant of not putting the cart before the horse. I mean, in my mind, it wouldn't be overly um, premature to, cons I mean, if we call it an ad hoc committee, and we try it out for one year and see how it goes. I mean, I'm just trying to think about how we can do it in a way so that people feel comfortable with moving forward because I don't want to be continuing to have no voice for our community and no awareness in our community about what's going on in Concord. Um, I think that if the mission of the committee right now is to inform and communicate which is not actually, I mean, the motion didn't really spell out exactly what the agenda of the committee would be. I don't think that it makes sense to shove it into the policy committee because they already have a lot on their plate. Um, I guess for the ex sense of expediency, like let's just vote on it as an up or down. And if it's no, then we can decide if we want to continue exploring it in another way. I mean, the original motion was to form the school board legislative committee um, to be comprised of the superintendent or designee, um, union designee, and one school board member. Um, and we can have an up or down 
okay vote on that and if it's no then we can go to the next what do we want to do if we're not doing that okay okay uh, do we have more discussion Liz can you I just, make it brief? I guess I'd like yeah I guess I'd like to propose an amendment I think Nancy I don't know why you don't talk first sometimes you offer your stuff at the end. Well, Lucia is supposed um, to talk last. Well, sometimes I wish you would talk first because I, <laughs> I guess I wasn't fully aware. I wasn't fully aware of the legislative committee with the city, and in pulling up the legislative committee in the city, um, there is four city councilors on the committee, along with the city manager and a staff. Um, uh, and so I guess I think the. The, my only hesitation with how this is set up or what Lisa is proposing is the fact that there is not a uh, majority representation from the um, school board or that there's not more representation of the school board on a committee. And I can understand her sentiment of getting us all together and da 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 da, you know, and so I understand that. But I guess I would propose a friendly amendment um, to add more school board members, you know, have three school board members uh, be part of the committee so that there is more voices within the school board um, on a committee if that's how we're going to go about doing it. Well, I, I'm Maybe, confused, Nancy. Okay, Brian you, had his hand up oh, first. I, I mean, so as it, as it is right now, I can't vote for it. Yeah, um, so, I mean, for me, if it's the scope is really around communication and forming, I will vote for it. Um, I just keep wondering, you know, really the makeup when you when you say, you know, well, the intentions to bring up resolutions every so often, well, it depends on the makeup of that particular board or that committee. Okay, that's fair. And so that's where I, that's, you know, and I'm okay with, I would vote for it if it was ad hoc to try it out. Okay. Um, but as the motion is on the floor, I, I wouldn't um, I would be comfortable it. making it ad hoc if that's, I'm hearing that from a few people. Um, I'm just trying not to make it so specific in terms of each piece. And so, again, so, why does it have to be formed tonight versus Revisiting it when our co-chair is well, we here. Have a also, motion on the just, table. I think okay. we should vote. I think we Nancy, should vote. Nancy, can you answer one quick question for me around the city? Yes. Um, because I know that some city, like I'm on a city committee that has school board representation, um, is and and I'm not suggesting this is done, but I just was wondering if they're looking at policies that impact and we're mm -hmm. part of the city. Has there never been? I thought educational. Of that, actually platform no. on the city to also they, look at educational policy they the deal city? with so much that doesn't involve education in the schools if so we, they don't look at any of the education they, oh no they do for instance the oh, statewide do. property tax well, they were a, the state a, funding I right know they do right yeah. right i mean things but, like that but um okay not to my mm -hmm. recollection um okay. i mean they would if it was a huge issue right but okay. if it's not and i thought about asking the mayor if we could put a, a school board member on that committee and then i thought they deal with so much that doesn't no, I'm involve not the suggesting schools. That it would we, really be boring for that person. I'm not person. suggesting we do that. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't an overlap yeah. or of what but, they're looking at. Right, stuff. right. Okay. I would say uh, usually no. Zach. Thank you. So I would just be hesitant of um, pushing forward something. Not the details. I'm not worried about the details, but I'm worried about the about real specificity about what is the task of the group. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like that's not totally developed yet. It's close. It's getting there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, um, I, get, I get, you know, as an operational person for you, I get nervous about um, not fully developed concepts where we create, you know, groups that are empowered in some way that's not totally clear around a purpose that's not mm -hmm. totally clear uh, yeah. and what that does to Op, the operational side of things. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, I again, I'm in favor of the of what overall we're talking about trying to do, um, but but maybe some additional dialogue first about refining that a bit would be good. Okay, Pip, you've had your hand up for a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I think what I was going to say has changed a little bit. Um, I just I want to sort of challenge those who are are saying 
um, that they're worried about the makeup of the committee because I feel like with every other committee we trust each other to get the information and come back and make recommendations and and then as Nancy pointed out we don't have to vote in favor of those recommendations we can always vote against them but I don't see this as very different I think that especially if there are three members on the committee representing different um, areas of, of um, or different groups of people who work with the school department, I think um, we're going to get some sort of balanced perspective on what's best for the schools. And I don't support the idea of putting more people on the committee because I think that we, we have challenges and often enough of making time for people to meet. And uh, I think this, we, I, don't, I think that the idea is to have one <clears throat> designee from the school board who brings the information to the rest of us. Um, and again, I, I would hope that we could trust that person to bring us accurate information. And I don't think that, um, I, I can't imagine that that person's personal political perspectives are going to play in so much that it would alter um, what kind of information we receive from them. Um, but then I also wanted to say, I think I'm in support of, of the idea of this being an ad hoc committee, and I like the idea of of putting a group together and allowing that group to then um, define a little more clearly what their expectations would be. And I would expect that the board could still have some input in that even after we create the committee. I don't, I don't see the harm in creating it because um, I don't think it's, 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 we're not really empowering that committee to do anything except bring us information. So that would be my perspective at this point. Okay, are we ready for a vote? Um, do you want to amend the motion to make it an ad hoc committee, Lisa? I'm happy to do that. Okay. Um, and who was the second? Does anyone remember who seconded the motion? I think Anne and I did at the same time. So, oh, is that acceptable I will to you too? That. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the motion on the floor is to establish an ad hoc um, legislative subcommittee of the board, made up of a board member, um, a member from the teacher. Uh, union and uh, an administrative person. Nancy, I'm sorry. I just feel like I need to add this before, just as a discussion point, because I was going to bring it up in the, in the committee updates. But to the point of brushing before things are really decided, we, we as a board were asked during COVID to set up a communication committee, which did get set up. And that committee has never been fully looked at by this board in the same way as a policy committee of communicating out and being able to drive communication, not write communication, but drive communication and drive a communication plan. It was never empowered fully by the board and it certainly was not empowered by admin. And so I will just say that because it didn't have a clear mission. It did not have full discussion and it has been in a reactive mode with COVID and then therefore after that not put to full use even though committee members have come forth many times to bring information that could improve the communication within our district. Now that may change. We have new administration that's obviously very favored towards this committee and supporting this committee's work. I want to be very clear that I, I have a passion for policy so I, I certainly support what you're bringing forth, um, Lisa, as far as keeping the board informed. Uh, you know, I stay informed myself, so, and, and informing the public. Um, and I think it's even beyond informing. I do think there needs to be a state of action as Portsmouth District, as Zach says. Not on every single thing that's coming down the pike, but people do need to know in Concord where Portsmouth stands. Um, and if we don't speak up, then, the state will be set by other districts. So I just put that out there for history because I don't think this board has fully understood. Sometimes they've said, let's put this under communication, but when, when things aren't clear, um, then the committee's not fully empowered. And I could see communication committee, um, we, can I just give a quick update? Like the communication committee is being looked at of helping develop um, communication plan for the district with our superintendent. And then 
it would be evaluated then of if the committee's needed, if it's not needed, you know, we'll take an assessment then. But I could see other ways that the communication committee could be used and a leg of that could be informing the board as well as um, the public. But that's just my two cents. Okay, thank you, Hope. I think we need to take a vote. Liz, we're ready um, to just, take a vote. Just real quick, I guess I wondered if we could add an amendment to provide a timeline um, on the ad hoc committee, uh, basically providing an update. It, like Pip had mentioned, she had said uh, the committee could sort of define expectations or maybe come back with an understanding or Zach can come back with an understanding of what can the New Hampshire School Board offer. Um, so if we did create an ad hoc, if we could actually add a timeline about reporting back on um, recommendation to keep it or not keep it, uh, what's available, what's not available, um, what, have, what have they discovered or what do they know uh, and what their plan is for moving forward, I guess. <coughs> I don't know. How, how about if yeah. we, I just want to make sure that I understand what you're asking. Um, you're asking for a timeline for how long we would keep this type of committee functioning before we assess or what are you asking for? I guess I'm asking that we add an amendment to um, create a timeline so whether we say um, the committee or the ad hoc committee would report back in um, you know at our next meeting or in three months uh, you know in lieu of waiting until the next meeting to establish this um, I guess my concern is I think Zach has some follow-up stuff that he's sort of spinning around in his head and I don't I hate to speak with speak for him but um, I think there's some things to look into as far as um, not recreating the wheel and it, are there avenues for us getting information and having a discussion as a school board that's productive um, within our agenda which we haven't really done before um, I mean I guess we're kind of doing it tonight with all these legislative updates that the school board's giving us but it's my understanding from what Zach's saying is that they might actually pump out updates I don't think I'm getting the emails, but they might actually pump out legislative, hey, things to watch right away, and maybe we can actually start adding those as agenda items and create a, uh, something within our packet that we actually discuss those as a board together. Um, so I hear uh, you, but that's way too much for an amendment. So I, I guess I'd like no. to ask for a vote on what's out. On, on what we have then, out there. I'm not saying we wouldn't do some of those things, but that's like. Well, no, I understand that. I guess my only amendment is just that we provide a timeline. So we say, uh, you know, I, I, guess, I guess maybe I should just throw something out there. That we, if we do vote to have this committee or ad hoc committee, that we would have some sort of update in three months from the committee or at, at our next meeting from the committee or two meetings from now. Well, that's whatever you want to, whatever seems appropriate. <laughs> we have committee um, updates every. Yeah, yeah. But that we have an update, meeting, and that so. we would decide at that point whether we keep the committee right. or not. Does keep the, the committee. No. Do, do you approve and that amendment? No. no. Okay, I'm sorry. That's crazy. Okay, let's vote on the motion. Oh, Zach. Oh, sorry. So, um, <laughs> I, I, um, I know. I've noticed a tendency, and in, in, in a short window, so by uh, where we pass. We want to pass things that we kind of sort of have an idea about. And, and on the operational side, I just tell you that it's hard. It's really hard when, when you have a kind of sort of policy, a kind of sort of committee, a kind of sort of whatever. It's really hard for, for us to understand what our role is in helping you utilize that to then operationalize it. Um, so so um, I would, I, and I know there's a, there's a sometimes there's a, um, is the impetus to be like we let's we got to do something, and so let's here's this proposal that's a kind of a kind of proposal, um, and uh, and maybe sometimes we just need to refine things a little a little bit more to be a little bit more clear about taking a couple extra steps before we create something whether it's policy or or some other mechanism or a committee or whatever without having really you know gone through a few more thinking steps. Okay, thank you, Zach. Let's have a vote. All those in favor of the motion? Can we do a roll call, please? Can we do a roll call? Sure. Let me get the, I gotta, I'm, I'm, ooh, it was my first roll call. <laughs> Very excited. Um, all right, so here we go. So the motion, can, can you, I can do the roll call if you can, oh, when yes. we can restate the motion again. Okay. <laughs> The motion is we will create well, why keep we the let, motion an ad table, hoc Lisa? legislative right, subcommittee of the board, which consists of a board member, 
a representative from the teacher association and a representative from our administrative team to stay on top of the legislation that's going on in, in Port Concord, Portsmouth, in Concord and to you know, bring relevant issues back to the board. And we agreed to make it an ad hoc. It's ad hoc, yes. Okay. And Nancy, can you just tell us what's the difference between ad hoc and actual committee? It's something for purposes that, it's of, something of the that board. Subset. I mean, sunset. It any temporary. time. Yeah, temporary. Okay, so we could take a vote. Like, how would we sunset it? Well, somebody could make a motion, and we could sunset it. Okay. All right. You could just say we're done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. So, um, so uh, on the motion on the floor, um, Liz. No. Pip. Yes. Lisa. Yes. <laughs> Ann. Yes. Margo was not here. Nancy. Yes. Hope. Abstain. Brian. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Okay. And those are all reporting numbers? Yes. So it's a yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. That was a interesting and oh uh, lively discussion. <laughs> and um, I hate to do this, but I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Can we take a two-minute two minute, two minute recess? <laughs> all right. Today's my 71st birthday.
uh, getting through the agenda. We are getting near the end. <laughs> the next um, item is the proposed resolutions up from that, um, am I correct about this? The um, New Hampshire School Boards Association. On October 1st, they have their district delegate assembly, a statewide delegate assembly, and all members, mm. it would be wonderful to have a representative from Portsmouth there from our board. It doesn't have to, it doesn't just have to be one person, as many board members as possible can go, uh, but you only have one vote. So what this piece of paper is in front of us is all the resolutions that have been submitted by various school districts. So they're gonna vote on all of these resolutions. So whoever represents Portsmouth will have a vote. Um, we don't have to look at this now. We can save it for the next meeting or we can give it to you um, again at the next meeting because October 1st is, our next meeting is the 27th of September. We can decide which of these resolutions we're gonna support, which we're not gonna support. And then whoever goes to the um, meeting on October 1st will vote on behalf of Portsmouth. Um, is there anyone that can attend on October 1st? You have to go to Concord to the Groponi Conference Center. It's 11 o'clock. I can attend. You can attend? Oh, Kerry, thank you. I might be able to go. I think um, I'm, is that on a weekend? No. Is that on Saturday? Saturday. Yes. Yeah. 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 Saturday. Um, I might I suggest, given that, if I um, may, I take the liberty of looking at these before our next meeting oh, and sure. making recommendations on how we vote yep. on these, and then we can discuss it on the 27th. Right. And everybody should actually do that too. Right. You know, everybody should. Or maybe if everyone can give yeah. me review these, give me their the vote. Feedback. And that way I can summarize the consensus. Okay, and good idea. Did everybody uh, understand that? So if we could get Carrie, our e send her an email or whatever with our impressions of all of these. You'll note that the School Board Association says what their um, stand yes. is on it. So that's, that's important to have that too, I think. I also accept no opinion. Like, <laughs> like for, against, no opinion. That, that, if you could just. Okay. And I appreciate those responses, not paragraphs, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> terrific. That went quick. Thank you, Carrie. I may be able to go. I, I might have to take my son to a camp. If I don't, then I'll be able to go to this. So I, we can go together in that case. And if anyone else wants to go, anyone, everyone's welcome. I've gone in the past. It's, um, it's interesting. <laughs> Are there, uh, is there food? Like, what's the setup? <laughs> <laughs> is that your criteria for going, Liz? Okay, um, it's 10 till 10, pirate, just pirate, keeping yes, time. Keep it going. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to turn this over to Zach, discussion of an ad hoc strategic plan, uh, the RFP, to develop the RFP for our strategic plan. So we, uh, I did not include, um, a memo or a slide or anything that had the dates that we talked about, I think mm -hmm. earlier, you know, I think I agree with Pip. We, we, oh, I think we, we agreed at retreat around certain dates were going to be the timeline around strategic planning. And one of those, uh, one of those things was around, uh, included having a group that was going to review, was going to work together to develop an RFP, uh, that we would then put out to vendors who, who would potentially help us with with uh, strategic planning, um, and um, so so basically what I'm looking for is just what the membership of that for the for the board to discuss what they want the membership of that to be. Um, I don't know how many people were on uh, previously on the strategic planning committee. I don't know how big that was, um, but I I think for the purposes of what I think is going to happen, if all goes according to plan, then on the, our next meeting on the 27th, we bring in, I think we talked about the idea of bringing in some sample groups that talk to us for 10 minutes or so a, a, a piece, take some questions from us to get a scope of what's available out there um, from different types of folks who might be able to help us. Uh, and then the RFP group would then go off, develop a draft that then would come back to the board. So it's really just a, it's a working group. Um, to take the information based on what people talk about on the 27th, uh, create a draft RFP, come back to the board for the board's input around what they think of the draft. Um, so this is not 
I think in talking with Nancy and Margo, I'm trying to think of what I said. I mean, it's really it's not a large group of people uh, this, because this is a wordsmithing thing as much as anything else. Um, so the original the, committee, just for history, thank you, was um, Steve and um, Nathan, yep. myself, Pip, and Brian, and then Pip dropped off. Okay. Not because of dedication, <laughs> because of scheduling problems. Okay. okay. So from the notes I took, we would interview four companies by November 1st, and then the board would choose a company, correct? So this little subcommittee um, would develop the RFP that would then go out to those companies. Yeah, go out correct? to the board. We would push, push out the RFP to a, in, through a variety of channels. Okay. For, to 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 make sure they got okay. in front of the right people. Okay. Um, and then we would get back the um, we get back the proposals, and the board would consider those proposals. Those down. Yeah. Did we do that last time? Did we develop an RFP? Yes. So can we go back and look look at that? We'll we examine the, the other the okay. other RFP. I will tell you, yeah. it was not strong because it was uh, a work off of something that was already in the district. Um, oh, so it needs to be revised so there, a bit. There is revisions I would okay. recommend. Okay. Um, but we did get proposals back, many of them. Um, the RFP also was very broad because, again, there was not a lot of guidance around the RFP, which is something else I would highly recommend be changed in this RFP, that there's much more specific guidelines and setting because otherwise we attract too broad a range of companies um, mm -hmm. dollar wise as well and so there's no need to weed out those that we can't even afford so we need to be specific about what we're looking for okay okay great now so what we just oh Liz um so I guess um uh, my understanding from Zach was that obviously we would hear from um, these folks and see what the, the options were and then we could sort of develop the RFP or the working group would develop the RFP based off of what we all felt the options or the group felt the options were. So a couple things. I guess, you know, the, the not that it has to be the exact makeup, but the superintendent search committee included uh, admin. Um, a certain level of admin, and it doesn't sound like the prior group had that um, uh, admin piece to the entirety. And so I guess given that we're looking at our schools, we're doing this this whole approach, I really would want the admin to be a part of that or, or have some um, strong admin uh, a part of that. And so my second concern, and, and so I, I guess I would propose that maybe it's similar um, or the same if possible to some extent of um, what the superintendent search committee was as far as that group makeup or look at that group makeup in considering this. And then my other concern is that if we're having these people come in, I would want those same admin to, in that group as a whole, not just the school board, um, that group to be available to see what their offerings are so that they could fully understand what was going on. So, um, so can I just add to that? I, I would just say that um, you being the superintendent, your admins report to you. So there was the opportunity to get admin feedback. Steve was a representation of the district um, and his admin. So I, I just say that because I, I know from a staffing perspective how limited we are these days and how much is on our admin plate. So I certainly, if there's people that are interested but i also think that the superintendent can certainly feel for an rfp for the need of an rfp it, it's RFP. not um i'm sure you've done these before too zach mm -hmm. so brian and yeah then that Carrie. was my only comment basically you know we're not forming the committee right, right now and it's really for the rfp so it's best to try to keep it small oh, as possible yeah um yeah. just to for moving forward quickly but i think we do absolutely need a full committee when we're Developing the strategic, strategic plan. plan. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, so, and then carry. So I was going to say, Zach my my first. hope out of this is to have what you're saying, Brian. Smaller the group, the better. Um, you know, I had said, th you know, th three, including me, three, five tops as the number of people. Because once you get in, and this wouldn't be the hope is that we're. We we're getting some conceptual guidance from the board coming out of the meeting on the 27th, and then 
to whatever degree the board narrows to, to what Hope is talking about, where if it's too broad, then it's a tough process. So we're hopefully we'd be informed in some way about some narrowing a little bit based on what we hear from the board and then this group to, of three to five people, three to four people, um, would then come back with a draft mm -hmm. for folks. And then again, the board has another opportunity to weigh in. I agree with, I understand what Liz is saying and what, and what you're saying, Brian, around once we get to the point where we have a vendor, almost all vendors are gonna ask you to have some type of steering committee right. for the strategic planning mm -hmm. process. And they're gonna have their own, t part of I think what you're gonna see in their proposals will probably be some type of definition from their perspective of who that, parts of that will be. Although they'll leave parts of it open-ended too. And so I think that whole like representation piece really comes in the steering committee portion once we have a vendor on board as opposed to necessarily during the RFP development, which is really just a wordsmith. Hopefully, depending on how the 27th goes, it's just a wordsmithing exercise. Okay. Thank you very much, Zach. Carrie had something to say. Yeah, I think, I think Brian got it, but I don't think that we need admin involvement in the RFP process, but absolutely in strategic planning. Um, I would look, I'd be happy to serve on this group. I don't know if, you, if that's what you want, is to like put it together. I need two to three school board members. So if you're interested, please let me know. And okay, Carrie, I have your name down already. Lisa's interested as well. Yeah, Who? I just have a question. Oh. <laughs> no. You don't know why you I'd put I'd be willing to do it again. <laughs> hip, hip, I, mean, shot at it since I, didn't I might, the depending on the time, but if there's okay. somebody else who wants to do it, I don't need to. My only question was for the retreat, we did have that exercise where we were asked to write a whole bunch of stuff about what we were thinking for the strategic planning. I know we didn't really get to that conversation, so I would just like to make sure that that, Those notes are in to there. the extent it was done, gets funneled into mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. process. Or that we can That's revisit the conversation, because we didn't get to have that yeah. conversation. Yeah. That's and right. That's an important, <laughs> informative conversation to the RFP. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so far I have Carrie, Pip, and Lisa who are interested. All right, anyone else? Well then, Carrie, Pip, Zach. and Lisa. Zach's oh. really interested. I oh, well, yeah, exactly. I am interested. He's volunteered. Yeah. Zach's <laughs> All right, so we have our, our Carrie, Pip, Lisa, and Zach. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, that takes us to the first step of the strategic plan. All right, do we have any committee updates? So I'll just echo in case people didn't understand earlier, so I'll make it quick. Um, being the board members on the communication committee, Lisa and I met with Zach, and Zach, please feel free to chime in. Okay. Um, we basically came to the conclusion that right now the best uh, use of the communication committee, seeing that we are going to go through a strategic planning process, is to um, help develop with Zach leading the way. Uh, communication plan for the district, which can also help inform the overall strategic plan as well, because usually you have one of those <laughs> included, <laughs> we would hope. Um, and then from that point, you know, we will assess if that, it, it's not an ad hoc committee, but we will assess if there's continued need for it, or, uh, what those needs would be, or if we need to dissolve the committee. Okay, thank you. Hope. Anyone else attend a committee yeah, meeting? Exactly. Maybe now that school has started, we'll have our committee meetings again. Okay, and I, I want to thank, talk about communications, thank Zach for his video um, messages that we've been getting. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Those are those have been awesome. I know. I would like to get them. Oh. oh I, I finally got them. We have to make sure that she I gets keep them. trying to forward them to you, Anne. And Work through yeah, the we problem. Have to work on that. I like the fact that you sent me the ones for the first day of schools. So that was appreciated. Okay, and I meant to hand these out at the beginning of the meetings. These are the Portsmouth School Board norms that we discussed at our retreat. I was supposed to hand it out at the beginning of the meeting. So everybody, <laughs> look at it, and then um, you know we can talk about it next time if people have questions, comments, whatever. Okay. All right. So upcoming events. Are there any upcoming events that anyone would like to talk about? No? Okay. And we're all set, I believe. May we have a motion to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> you want to stay here, everybody? Seconds. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Lisa and Hope. Um, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone. <laughs>